Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield uh, Select Board, uh, Board of Health meeting on November 20th, 2019 at 6 p.m. We're starting at 6.02 p.m. in the Deerfield Municipal Offices in the main meeting room, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be recorded. Um, if you come to the mic tonight, please state your name and um, speak loudly into the mic so people at home can hear and everyone in the audience. Sounds like we have sound tonight too, so thank you FCAT yep. for that. That's awesome. Um, I was just going to make a couple of quick announcements and then just an agenda a little bit. Um, can I run through these oh, real sure. quick? Because yeah, uh, yeah. I always tend to forget at the end of the meeting. Um, you know it's fall and almost winter when I get a bunch of flyers from, from Sue in the rec department. So I just want to go over a couple of things for sign-ups. I saw some people signing up the other day. So co-ed basketball, grades 7, 8, and 9, the Recreation Department of Conway. Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley are offering a recreation program for boys and girls. Players from all towns will be combined to form teams. Grades 7, 8, and 9 will be begin practice in December. Games are Saturdays beginning January 4th. Please contact your local recreation department for more details. Um, so there's a flyer here in town to check out. There's also Santa's Workshop on December 7th at the Deerfield Elementary School. This is a fun event every year um, that the rec department puts on. So. Um, uh, 12 to 3, there'll be Chosen's Crafts, and at 12.30, Santa arrives, and 1 to 2, uh, will be a magic show by George. So bring your camera, um, take pictures with Santa, and um, so please come. There's, there's flyers on that, too. And then there's also the Deerfield Recreational Basketball 2019-20 uh, season. That's grades for, for grades 1 through 9, um, and there's sign-ups here and uh, the costs here, and you can pick up stuff at the town hall. Uh, there will be a skill, uh, skills assessment for grades three and four on Thursday, November 21st uh, at uh, 545 at the Deerfield Elementary, and the same night at 645 for grades five and six at the Deerfield Elementary. So please come take advantage of that. And then there's also, it looks like Deerfield uh, let's see, Deerfield Recreation 2019 and 20. Oh, this is the same skills assessment for this, so just separate flyer on that. And ice skating, so uh, for all Deerfield residents, um, an adult must accompany any child under the age of 13. You'll be asked to show proof uh, that you are a Deerfield resident. A driver's license will be sufficient. This is ice skating sponsored by the Deerfield Recreation Department. An ICE monitor will be present to assist with any problems or questions, and this is all skaters will be required to sign in, sign a facility use agreement and liability waiver, waiver for Eagle Brook um, and the town of Deerfield before using the facility. This is on Sunday nights through the winter, uh, December 1st through January 26th from 5.30 to 6.30. Um, there'll be no skating on December 29th, but um, this is at the Eagle Brook School, and they make, make the, the ice rink available for all Deerfield residents. So. Take advantage of that. And I think um, the alert. Yes. Um, okay. um, do we have any idea how many children actually participate in Santa's workshop? This is pretty well attended. The, uh, the last few times I have gone, um, I couldn't count the number, but it was a pretty full room in the, in the uh, cafeteria. About 100? I would say, yeah. It may be a little less, but yeah, it's definitely a great turnout. I'm just going to grab that alert thing off. Um, I just want to make a couple quick. Uh, uh, Announcements. I just oh, finish. sure. I'd like to suggest that the town actually sponsor this and pay for it so that people have to pay five dollars. Okay, I, I think that's actually a good idea. The 100 that's 500 dollars, so it's not, uh. Uh, yeah, okay, go ahead. So, um this is uh, so we're really trying to get residents to sign up for the Deerfield Alert, um, smart 911. Um, this was a a program called RAVE. It's been called a few different things, but it's Deerfield Alert, and we are moving away from uh, the code red that we had had, um, and we, we really need to get every resident, if they can, to sign up for alerts when we have, you know, something, you know, some emergency happen in town. We really love people to um, get online. You can get text, you can get an email, you can get a phone call. Um, there's a lot of easy ways to get this, and I know um, I posted some stuff on the Deerfield Now Facebook page. We have a whole thing on our town website, um, on our town Facebook page. But if you can, uh, if you text Deerfield Mass to 67283, you get automatic texts. Or um, 
And just follow the link on our, on our homepage at www.deerfieldmass.us. Um, you just fill in your phone number, your address, you know, that, any ways to kind of contact you, but it's really important. So we're going to try and do a push to get these mailed out to you. Um, and then a follow-up postcard. We just really want to get enough people signed up on this. Um, it's the only way that we can really contact everybody if there's an emergency. So we, it's really if we have bad weather, roads are closed, um, emergencies are happening. We want people to know about it. So um, this is a is less expensive, mm -hmm. and it has more flexibility, and it has is a much better system. Yeah. And so um, please, please try to sign up. Lord, and if you are signed up now, you think you're signed up but you haven't done anything recently, then, that, then you truly are not signed up. Yeah, just so go check. You can't, just check. You know, even if you sign up twice. Um, so um, Lori McComb, our emergency management director, has been really working hard on getting us grants so that we can do this stuff and get, get this information out to you and get everybody signed up. So please, um, please do so. I just had um, to um, my Homeland Security meeting yesterday. Um, the council approved our exercise. That oh, good. The we're, tabletop we're, yes, yep. we're going to sponsor it. So we got the fifteen thousand dollar grant to um, do the exercise, and uh, so I'll be planning with the FERCOG. We have to go through the notice of, um, you know, uh, posting, but we're hoping the Fer FERCOG will. Um, they did such a good job last year on our drill that um, hopefully they'll get, you know, uh, chosen. And we will start working with them. And I, I'm, I'm hoping to do this by the spring sometime, late spring. I know it's a busy time, but, you know, we just, if something ever happened, we're just not, definitely not prepared for evacuations and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so, and then today I had the uh, Massachusetts Association of Conservation Districts meeting. And um, I'm on the State Soil Health C Committee. And um, it looks like the soil health will be incorporated in the MVP program, and municipalities will be eligible. So what that means is we'll, maybe we'll be able to get a forestry plan for our town forests and do a lot of work in our parks under park the um, you know, climate change stuff, adaption and stuff like that, so to make it more um, friendly and, and, and do more stuff downtown. So I'm, I'm actually excited because I think this will multiply and leverage some more additional funding. Good. So that's pretty exciting. Great. So that that's it. I, I, although so much has been happening, I mean, <laughs> just meeting after meeting. Everybody's yeah. trying to get everything done before the holiday, so it's like solid. <laughs> yeah, it has been packed. I know. For sure. Anything else from anybody? Um, okay. We'll um, we have a uh, let's see a classification tax classification hearing um, at six fifteen. So we have about five minutes for that. Um, do you, anybody, have, have you read the minutes? Do you want to approve the minutes? Or make motions on those? Or Do we have minutes? Yes. Okay. Here, you can have this minute. I've got a second. Oh, all right. I haven't, do I you want to do that I after know, that? because I've been gone all day. Okay, yeah. that's fine. We, we could do, do the later. one minute, I mean, the one day liquor license. Yep, our consent great. agenda. We have, um, our consent agenda consists of um, a one day liquor license uh, request for Yankee Candle Village for the tree lighting event on November 23rd, uh, the girls' night out on December 11th, and the last minute shopping event, ugly sweater themed, on December 18th. And then we have the minutes, which I'll pull out of that consent agenda because we're going to wait on that till later on. Um, and then we also, on the consent agenda, maybe we'll discuss these items first before we go ahead and approve those. And this is the holiday hours. So Christmas Eve, December 24th, um, we were going to discuss closing town hall a little early that day. Um, so we want to talk about that time. We are closed Christmas Day, obviously, um, Wednesday, December 25th. And New Year's Eve, we're closed at regular time, which is 4 p.m. on New Year's Eve. And we're closed New Year's Day, which is Wednesday, January 1st. So we, I'm not sure what hours we typically close well, early Well, it seems like in the Christmas past we've, we've closed um, in the noon time. Okay. I don't, I don't know how you feel about that, but I, I think people should that. go home for this, be with yeah. their family. And get the time to do the last minute stuff. Um, any discussion on that? Or no, I think in the past what we've done is the, um, we've closed at noon and um, left it up to the, uh, the office to leave a skeleton crew there in the morning. Okay. 
Yep. And um, not have full staffing. All right. That's fine with us. Um, of course, one time they put a skeleton in there. But <laughs> 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 yeah, it's our time. So um, aside from the minutes that we'll pull out, um, take a motion on the consent agenda. Um, I make a motion to approve it. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, we can do the minutes. I, I um, just have one more set here. Mm -hmm. um, I make a motion to um, approve the minutes of October 23rd, September 25th, September 30th, and October 9th. Just to clarify, the October 23rd is for 2018. So, yeah, um, I, I, I don't remember that. That's, you, that was our workshop that? group on the, um, Dave Prickett gave a formal presentation on a wastewater uh, okay. assessment study All right. that night. Well, so, I know that um, so Dave wasn't there. But yeah, we had just a few spattering that we couple used things in that were left in there. Yeah. And we're yep. just trying to finish those. Oh, sure. Trying to wrap Abstain those up. from the 25th as well. Okay. So, it wasn't there. The 25th as well. Let's see. What's um, that? Uh, that's the uh, executive this, this session. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay with all these. It looks like it's fine. Oh, wait a minute. This, no, you were at uh, that was one. It. Yep, that you was were at that one. one. I was yep. thinking this was Monday, so. Oh, gotcha. Yep. No. Um, did, did we get a, did we, that read person call you for the, he, he, he um, is working on the LED lights? Oh, yes. Paul. Um, Paul Vessel. Yes. Vessel, yes. thank you. Yes, okay. yes, yes. we have talked about right. that, and we're, I yes. think we still need to discuss I'm, that item. I met with the Energy Committee last night. Oh, so, good. Yeah, so maybe so give an update on that after? I can. Yeah, okay, great. Can. Okay. We'll talk about that a little All right. later. Then that's okay. fine. That was so, the only other thing. Uh, we have the motion to approve. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And, and uh, David's abstaining from the 2018 minute. All right, like it's 6.15, so, um, so. Thank you for coming up. Welcome. Um, I'm just going to read this here. So uh, this is 6.15 p.m. tax classification hearing. The Deerfield Select Board will hold a public hearing on November 20th, 2019 at 6.15 p.m. in the town offices of 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, on the issue of allocating the local property tax levy among the five property classes for the uh, fiscal year ending June 30th, 2020. This, class, this tax classification hearing will be held for the purposes of providing an open forum for the discussion of local property tax policy and whether all five classes of property, residential, open space, commercial, industrial, uh, and, and personal, shall be taxed at the same rate or at different rates. Information and data concerning the fiscal effects of um, of the of the available alternatives is open to um, let's see is open to public inspection in the office of the board of assessors in the town offices 8 Conway Street South Deerfield Mass between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. Monday Tuesday Thursday and Friday interested taxpayers may review the material and attend the hearing written and oral statements uh, from interested taxpayers will be accepted and taken into consideration at the hearing written statements will also be accepted prior to the hearing. So welcome, assessors. Thank you. Hello. How are you? Good, Good. how are you? Good. Good to see you. Um, so I'm Skip Sobieski, board of the, uh, chair of the board of assessors. Chuck Shattuck, uh, member of the board of assessors. Thank you for coming. Um, and we are, tonight we are proposing a single tax rate of $15.69 per thousand dollars of valuation um, we do have some figures for if you decided to go with a split tax rate um, you could reduce the residential rate down to all the way down to thirteen dollars and nine cents uh, the commercial rate would be twenty three fifty four which would also include all agricultural property as well so okay to see how that um, I have had the same um, Opinion, and I haven't seen anything different since last year. Um, that there's no really good reason to have a split tax rate. It's not conducive to a stable business mm. um, 
climate, climate, and um, and attack and business, you know, staying in town, and mm -hmm. um, we, you know, if you're if you're trying to nail nail somebody on the way out, I I might think about that, but there really is no basis from all the research I've done or anything I've read that it, you know, there's no real positive. It sounds good in the short term, but there's mm -hmm. no positive long term benefits of a split. Right. Tax yeah, no, we rate. agree with that. Drives yeah. people out, out the yeah. door. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we're proposing the single tax yeah. rate. Yeah, the other problem is it includes farms. Right. Exactly. And some yeah. of us have menageries at their home and might be charged as a farm. <laughs> right. Um, so, the tax rate, just so you have some figures, the tax rate did go down from about just over 1% last year was 1591. Um, and this year, 1569 is the proposed rate. Um, however, the average um, single family home valuation increased about 5%. So on average, the, you know, the average, um, the average person in town is looking at about a 4% increase in their tax bill, so. Okay. Because of uh, because of valuations, and I guess the question, you know, some people have: Well, can you just set the rate? I, I'm getting a little bit of an education, so, so can we just keep it at fifteen nine one? And and it really, you don't you're not you don't have that ability because your your um, budget's already set for the year, and you, and Correct. this is to raise the money to cover your expenses that you have, um, and you know, with the new growth that we've had in town with the condos or other, other things getting built in town um, that has been able to kind of reduce our expense in some cases. We have a long-term expense because now we take care of that property for forever, but um, it's not like a, we, don't, we can't just pick the number. It's got to cover the expenses that we have, correct? That's correct. Correct. And actually, uh, e even with that um, tax rate, we are only about, I have the figure here, we're about Five thousand dollars under our levy ceiling. Right. So that's the most we could, you know. So even if we want to put penny, we be yeah, would be over the yep. levy ceiling for the year. So correct. Yeah. I make a motion to um, uh, close the hearing and approve this um, fifteen sixty nine at single tax rate. Do the second. I'm just going to second so I can have discussion from the public. Okay. Yes, second. Any, uh, anybody from the public who would like to make any statements? I have not seen any written um, no. correspondence about this at all. I, I don't really think there's any long-term. Um, I mean, I have not seen anything positive about a split tax rate. Right. And the rate where we're at, yeah. I think, is. I mean, I went to a couple classes even because mm -hmm. I didn't know too much in the beginning. And, yeah. and it seemed like. If if you were a de declining community, and there and there was a, or a single employer was leaving, right. then there was a reason to have a split tax rate. But if you want long term stable well, growth people to come here and, and, and you keep want to rate. continue to have business come in, which generate more taxes than requirement and services, mm -hmm. then um, you know you don't really have much choice. And one of the questions um, somebody may have in the public is, you know, with all the expenses coming down the road, why are we not, why are we reducing this a little bit? And why are we not raising the rate? Well, those expenses haven't hit the town yet. So, and typically there'll be a lot of them are, you know, what we're doing is, is a debt excluded. So it'll be over above the tax rate. That's some of the stuff right. that we have going yeah. on. So, um, okay. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you guys for your work. I know right, it's hard kind of getting Thank all you. that together. And we, I know Karen's worked hard and everybody yeah, she in the office, very Brenda hard. and Barb and yeah. Diana, and everybody's kind of working hard to get that rate set. We do have one uh, page for you guys to sign. Yes. And then Trevor, I, I think you're going to sign on the line later. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe you have okay. another. I guess the three of you are going to sign section down there. Okay. Just to save phone calls, um, when do you anticipate the tax bills being based based on our successful um, hearing tonight? Usually I would say it should be approved within a couple weeks. 
Okay. It'd so then be a Christmas problem. present, huh? Yeah. It seems like. Yeah. We are hoping, you know, to somewhat streamline the process with Patriot properties, and hopefully, I think we get it. That's been a little bit sooner, you know, but it's. Kind of this is better than we have in the past. Well, that's about a week earlier than. Yeah. That has been a discussion a little bit, and you know, kind of maybe at some point we should have a have a joint meeting to discuss. Um, you know, I guess right now we do this twice. A year. You know, we set it once and then it goes out. We go out twice a year versus quarterly. help me with this quarterly. Right, we're semi annual. We're semi annual. Semi right. So um, I don't know enough about the benefits of doing that versus you know uh, any other way. So I know that we always seem to be. In my few years, we're scrambling to get everything done to get out the door, and it's, you know, it may, maybe there's another way of doing it. So I don't know. Uh, I'd love to hear that at some point, but it doesn't yeah. have to be tonight. Okay. So, uh, All right. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, guys. you both for thank coming you. out tonight. Thank you. So. We have the personnel committee. Yes, I I'd like to just move up. You know, I know we have uh, some other stuff going on, but I wanted to move the personnel board <coughs> is here, and we're, we're going to come up and talk a little bit about, um, you know, we're starting to do our, our budget kickoff meeting, and then it's to re this first part is to receive the personnel board's recommendations for COLA and to vote a COLA this year. Um, uh oh. Your truck? <laughs> or your phone? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, welcome, Ray Loon and Skip. Hi. So just, and then state your name for everybody in the audience. And okay. Uh, my name is Ray Loon Bialik, and I'm the chair of the personnel board. Welcome. Uh, Skip you, Olmstead, sir. I'm a member of the personnel board. Thank you. So we met last night, and we talked about the COLA and the update for the compensation classification schedule. And the recommendation from the personnel board is to follow the CPI for the Northeast region for, for fiscal year 21, which is 1.5%. So okay. just to cross the board, apply that to the one to the fiscal year 20 schedule. Okay. Okay. Um, I had, was looking at this a little bit too over the last couple months to kind of see, I think I looked at it in into September, early October, just to kind of see where things were were coming out, and that seemed to be, you know, there was one seven, one five, or one six, or something. It all seemed to be in that one five range, um, at least for the northeast one. But um, I'm glad you guys feel the same way, and I feel comfortable with that. Um, I make a motion to support so, that recommendation. Uh, oh, sorry. So with the compensation schedule, so you're going to have the step plus the cola. If they're eligible. Correct. If they're eligible. Right. Just to apply the 1.5 to the <coughs> whole schedule, and then however people are moving on it, it they would receive that, mm -hmm. that raise. Well, I make a motion to support that recommendation. I'll we'll second it. Any further discussion and comments from anybody? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much Thank for that work. Thank you very much. Really Thank you. So, appreciate it. Um, do you Go mind ahead. just staying around for two sure. seconds? Because we, why don't we just do address that whole budget kickoff? Mm. Not, you know, if you don't want to stay, that's all right. We're, we're only, but we would really love you if, if it could stay for mind. Yeah. But it would be great if Skip was stay too. So we, um, and Dinah may have some more stuff. I know the email went out today, and uh, at least to us, um, but. Um, we were, we were, you know, we just did receive the personnel board's recommendation on COLA and the other items were address capital improvement plan submittals and discuss and set physical policies and procedures for 2021 right. for a budget. So, so, so generally the town accountant around this time of the year and the town administrator and town accountant get together and send out a budget memo that tells the departments that the budgets are due in the early part of January and if there's any cost of living agreed upon that is uh, indicated as well, yep. and if there's any um, operational initiatives or any um, directives that the board wants to give. So if you wanted to, say, do a level service budget or if you had, um, you know, policies you wanted to address, in the past couple years you've talked about, you know, we've had an OPEB policy that we funded, um, yep. you know, we kind of have a set amount that we've been looking at for that. Um, you know, we've talked in the last couple of years, I don't think we finalized 
fiscal policies and what to put right. in sort of capital stabilization right. and what to put in regular stabilization and those kinds of things. So I just wanted to give the board an opportunity mm. to think about those things as we kick off the budget process right. as opposed to in the ending sort of springtime right. part of the budget. I, I was Go hoping ahead. that um, through the course of the winter, maybe the personnel committee could look at what um, would be open, what, what would be a good OPEB policy. What are other people doing? We, uh, we, and we can update you on, oh, so let me explain a little bit what OPEB is, if some, some don't know. <laughs> right. See my face. Yeah, I do. <laughs> so OPEB is other post-retirement um, benefits. Um, it's basically health insurance. It's health insurance for our retirees, um, and it's, it's what we put in to cover. There's, um, so each year we pay for the people that are retired already. Huh. That's a, an amount we pay every year, and we, you know, it's a big, big number. And then we also have to figure, um, start, so a few years back, um, rating agencies started looking at towns and said, well, you're not putting any money away for your current employees and what they're going to need in the future. So we do for pensions, and we, we've been funding our pensions, but we haven't put anything away. We hadn't no, for the last couple fought, of years. We, we hadn't. fought tooth and nail, and we have a little bit. We, we make have a started, little bit. but yes. it's it's woefully inadequate, really, to yeah. cover. But it's just the starting, you know. And OPEB is a number. Nobody can give you an exact. You can't say like your OPEB number should be this because it fluctuates a lot. Every, um, it you know, depending on a lot of different factors. But it's we know that it's way like if it should be here or here or here, we're kind of down here. So we really need to start um, investing a bit more. We have a, a um, EMS service we run with three towns and we're trying to kind of, we should be setting an example for what they should be putting in. Um, and, you know, we have other enterprise funds that, you know, we, we just really need to support our people and make sure that we're responsible enough. It affects our loan and how much we get when we go to borrow. You know, let's say, look at your your exposure down the road. So, there's been a lot of you know. Carolyn was freaked out about this maybe five years ago, and then I came on and we started to kind of both get scared about it. But it, you know, it's it's uh, it takes a little while to get your head around what it is, and what it means, and and we do get um, looked at by gap. We there's a gaps gas B45, and they look at kind of what that exposure is. So we should. You know, if, if you wanted to take a look at that with your board, that would be really helpful. I'd be happy to partake in that discussion. Um, I just, aside from that, I wanted to talk about, I would love to have a meeting with the Finance Committee and um, if Capital wanted to be there as well, to just um, mainly Finance Committee to start talking about some policies and stuff and get back on that train. And, you know, I just like meeting with you guys because we can talk well, and, about and what the expenses our, and, and are. And look at our comp scale again. Mm -hmm. you know. Personnel we, definitely. Yep. Yeah. More so we talked last night about the, the need in the coming year to look more closely at Great. the grades and the steps and the, yep. the scoring and uh, the whole picture. That'd um, be great. As it relates well, to. Well, yeah, because it, it's just, it seems like we're always up, up against not, you know, the, you want to hire at the bottom end. Right. And, and it's, we're just not competitive And then we're at not all. competitive. And, and, it, and it's just as. So that's something that we, we do want to look at in the next year, for okay. sure, we discuss that. And I mean, it seems like it's a reasonable thing to, to at least bring up to the board. The, yeah, the OPEB. The, the yeah, o OPEB, yeah. OPEB. OPEB. Yeah, I just, <laughs> I just feel like we need to make a more reasonable payment. And it's not we that I want to spend more money, but it's not fair to kick the can down yeah. the, and leave somebody with you know, uh, this huge... It's moment. our children that'll be paying the bill. Yeah. So, I mean, as usual. Um, so, what what we have right now for a policy that we put in place a couple years back and started funding over the last couple years is that we take 4% um, of what we currently pay our... our so, our bill mm -hmm. comes due for our current um, uh, retirees. We take 4% of that and, and put it in a side fund. Right now, it hasn't even really gone into any... We really need to get it into a... Um, investment device, you know, because it's such a long-term thing, you you can be yeah. a little risky. You can't be too risky, but that that uh, item, you know, a lot of a lot of towns can't go into high-risk bonds and stocks and stuff. But that one investment, you can actually be a little more risky because it's such a long-term 
long horizon thing that um, we could at least start earning some money. And then we could look at other, what I would love for you to do is look at other areas that, and we would help with this, that we could pull in some funding for. And I know when the, there was talk when the um, pension was paid off and up, up, you know, that money we would then maybe transfer in the future. I'm not sure what year that is. I don't know if anyone has a figure on that, but. Sometime in the early 30s. In the early 30s. So it's a ways <coughs> out still, but we would then take that funding and put it towards OPEB because that would be money that, you know, the money you don't miss, but right. you miss, but it's, um, it would be already, you know, and then if there's any other things, some towns use, um, you know, some of the rooms tax, or there's different things that they'll use, instruments they'll use with, you know, marijuana coming on, there, you know, that revenue could maybe get a portion mm -hmm. of that. Different ways if, they could yeah, pull Different money. ways to pull a little bit to try and help, because nobody has that kind of money to just slide in, mm -hmm. you know, 10% or something a year to cover over. I think probably the biggest problem that we have with paying any significant amount is that in order to cover our pension liabilities or projected pension liabilities for the Franklin County, the group of employees who are part of the Franklin County retirement system, mm -hmm. uh, right now we take that total payroll for those employees or last year and we sent Franklin County Retirement System 19% of that in addition yeah. to yep. whatever the employees were paying, which is a huge between amount. 9 and 11%. Yep. So that's an enormous amount. And it is. It's, and it's done nothing but go up for the past five years that I know of. Yep. It there is isn't a pile of money left. Yeah, around. I was just yeah. going to say, but it is supposed to stabilize. It's just everybody well, said that before when it was <laughs> something know, like 12 or 13 percent, and it's just so yeah. we'll have to see. And we don't see that until uh, yeah. it well into uh, January or maybe even later uh, when they send us the bill. Yeah, uh, I know it's there. There isn't a, a pile of money you can just slide across and say we need to put it in here. But so we need to get creative somehow and. Do what we can to try and make, you know, so when that comes along and is due, is, you know, we're covering that delta a little bit better. So, um, but I would love to start, you know, start talking about the, you know, the, the different projects we're going to have coming up over the year and, you know, what expenses we're going to need. So it would be nice to get a joint meeting together. But well, and so that's the other piece just to finish the, mm -hmm. you know, the sort of the three tiered is the capital improvement plan and last year you know we kind of missed the the mark on getting the written paperwork in for the complete streets project Correct. which we wanted to have some funding for the design yep. um, if we want to do that for this coming year you know I want to make sure we get something in yes so there's some I, I think some of the you know the town common committee has now kind of been alerted so yep. they may be looking at something um, I'm going to be working with David Gilbert Keith because as you were saying about the energy committee there's things projects that the energy committee would like to see now to fruition that are going to take a little bit of funding or some yep. support financially um, so we're putting all those together. Um, tomorrow morning there'll be a department head meeting, and I really think that for the future plan, um, you know, we ought to consult with the library and make sure that we're getting the library. Um, you know, a lot of people have been talking about the library in this last um, go round with the construction grants and the design grants. So we have a design grant already. When the construction grants become available, you know, the town of Deerfield, if you want to have a new library and get the MLBC ready. money or ML, yeah, whatever the library commission money, you're going to have to kind of be nimble on that. You might mm -hmm. have like six months or so to put right. together a town meeting vote to vote you know some millions of dollars so I think we have a sense of what that is and we should at least get that on the plan right. in the future to start I know we thinking were talking about, about that was it last year or the year before I think it was a little early for us we were thinking it was two years out so we were well, going to wait it, maybe to it this depended year. on whether Greenfield I mean because they bond right. every few years so it depended whether Greenfield went forward or not and, and they have like they, are. they actually did vote to go forward so it slowed Puts the process us back a little bit. Puts yeah, us back. It slowed the process down a little bit, waiting for their vote. They're going forward, so that also sucks up the money. Correct. Uh, and that's a fairly big project. There's just like 19 million yeah, or something. It's a big, so big job. Our, um, it pushes us back another year or two, I think. 
or 18 months or something like that. But it, it's worth getting on the, yeah. on the capital plan. I think just in terms of this in the next five years, right, you know, to be plan, at least to kind of thinking, that. you know, Barbara's been, um, you know, some of the talking about the tax rate and, you know, getting, mm -hmm. you know, the semi-annual, um, you know, Deerfield's been in, in a strong financial position and have had a good tax flow or cash flow in previous years. You know, this year you're, you know, you've, you've bought some property and we have some things coming up with the borrowing for the wastewater treatment and the right. short-term borrowing things like that so um, we just the, the best way that yep. we can project the debt schedule you know that's part mm -hmm. of Barb being on the um, capital planning committee is so that she can also look at the debt schedule over like a 10 15 right. 20 year period um, that all has an impact on your tax rate and you know that these kinds of it things does. so um, yep. the I we just would like to at least get the plan um, the the fiscal 21, I think, you know, everyone can we everyone yeah. gets their stuff in and we focus on that. But, but the, the plan scale. going forward is where I think also we'd like to put a little attention. Yeah, on. show the priorities of what we're tackling, and then you know, obviously the sewer stuff we're working on, how much we're going to need for that each year. Exactly, and then, we will have a debt schedule that we'll be able to insert, you know, shortly. -ish, I mean, temporary borrowing, but still yes. have something, you know, each year that we'll be sort of projecting for that. Correct. Um, we can put that in, and but the more that we can insert in there, then the then the better understanding that you can have of what's coming, you know, down the road, yeah, and and certainly the the things that we talk. About about a lot we don't have any money for culverts like we don't have right. money for like every time we want to fund culverts Sidewalks. we don't have any money I know um, you know we talk about these things like every year year over year I mean last year Kevin Public Works came and made a presentation like a 15 or 20 year plan of, yep. of Public Works so we know already yeah, we wanted about like some of those enough. yeah what some of those things are well we have 119 um, stream crossings that under DOT's um, grant that we had inventoried. Um, so I think we should put in for another grant. I think it's in August to do an infrastructure review, which would give us update on the culverts from, you know, that were not in the Deerfield River watershed. So it's all, really, it's all the south end of town here. Mm -hmm. And that might give us some real indication. And, and I think you can apply, because River Road really should be reviewed. There's yeah, no huge doubt. problems on River Before Road. I mean, that's just longer. not culverts. It's just it's the whole road. So I think it, we could write the grant to do um, that infrastructure grant um, to do the, the in, finish the inventory down here of the, our culverts, but also have River Road reviewed. Because I think it, and I, and I think you can get up to like 120,000 or something like that. Who is that, that grant through? It's um, tie and bond did one for West Springfield. I was talking to him because um, when we were at the last um, capital improvement committee, mm -hmm. um, they want, everybody's shocked. And, and the thing is, you shouldn't be shocked. It's just, you know, this is the way it is. It, you know, our culverts are, there's just every a lot town. of them. Every town. And, and yeah. every town has to upgrade them because of climate change. So. Um, the idea is to upgrade them properly so you don't have to revisit them again and, and to have more resiliency built in. So the DOT under, we got that through the Resilient Communities Group grant. They did that, mm -hmm. that part of town. So now um, Ty and Bond says that there's, um, we, we just missed this year, uh, I think it was back in April. Um, I mean, um, August, it's August of every year, so it's April and August. So we, th we either can make the April one or we can make the August one. Um, and it's okay. through the state, and uh, they provide money for infrastructure review. So I think that's what we're going to have to do. It's part of resiliency, whatever. It's, a, it's under the transportation bond. Okay. But it seems like it would be helpful when we have, you know, we've been having the discussions almost every couple months about MVP and about the yes. water issues and the climate resiliency. So to at least be looking at some capital, Correct. you know, financing to support those things that are going to be coming up on a regular basis. If you right. if you know that know. it's going to be happening. Well, well the, we the, the only problem is that um, I, I, we had, you know, we originally had put the MVP, you know, pot of money on our uh, last special town meeting. The problem is you don't really know what projects you're going to get approved for. And so to have the money just sitting there in a pot not being 
well, used is, is if it can yeah. be in a capital uh, yeah I mean more for capital. like capital stabilization yeah, exactly. like or earmark some of our capital right. stabilization exactly. for Just as a, the as a, grant as a mat or as a, as a um, our, our regular you know, stabilization is perfectly fine to use for, right. for that too so yeah it's a, that's what I yeah. mean like have, have an idea just to like, identify though what it is what the needs yeah. are I, I, I just great. am nervous about setting another pot of money sitting no aside. but oh, I know. But nail but no, use that we get I mean regular stabilization correct enough we're putting relatively yeah. and not small amounts but right. relatively speaking we're putting money in Each and year. not using it for three or four years and then you may take a chunk out right uh, the last time we took money out of the regular stabilization we took a million dollars out to reduce uh, the the expense not the cost but the expense uh, that we were going to have to bond the amounts that we were going to have to bond for the highway uh, garage. Okay. Brought that from six million down to five million, give or take. Yep. So that kind of thing. So yeah, we can do that. And we've, and I, I'm not sure what we've had in stabilization, regular stabilization. I'm going to say it's about 1.2 million yeah. or thereabouts. Right. So that's the, re that's the reason. Another reason to do the inventory and 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 analysis of our of our infrastructures because there seriously has been no money on the federal level mm -hmm. for any infrastructure. So it's being built up the demand all across the country. So at some point, you know, something's going to happen. There will be an infrastructure. Um, program of some sort and we want to be able to take advantage of it ready so roll. we need we need to have some shovel ready ideas mm -hmm. and we do but we need to move a little bit further along so With that design. we can make our case and and you know take advantage of that yes because right. the last time you know in 2008 when we had, when that went came through we weren't ready for anything right we had no engineering and by the time the money you know it be, got eaten up it got already gotten eaten up and gone but if right. we are ready to get in line then we can do it. And right. that's what I think we have to do. Right. So a good so meeting, maybe a joint so meeting to kind of nail down some right. of that stuff would yeah. be great. Well, I will start. The the, um, the capital planning requests are actually due in the first week of December to, right. you know, myself. So yep. I have started working on, you know, some of these. Right. Um, it, but I do, you know, I, I, it's also the capital improvement committee themselves have been having discussion about how much, um, you know, how extensive they want the plan to be or how, you know, sort of how deep they want to go into the planning process. Mm -hmm. So that's all to be worked out. But I right. think it's better to have, to get them more information, you know, Do you less. know when the next uh, CIPC meeting is? Uh, did we December 5th. December, December 5th. 5th. Or whatever, um, it's... Six o'clock? Uh, is that Wednesday or next meeting? Yes. It's before our next meeting. Oh, it right. is. Okay, right. good. So yeah. I think that's the 5th, whatever. 4th or 5th. Yeah. Fourth. Fourth. Okay, it's December fourth. Okay. So I, I think if I remember correctly, both the uh, capital I mean, no requests and the budget requests, we've asked that those all be in capital by December first. Yes. Yes. Or December second this year. Yeah, January first. Right. Right. Uh, in other words, not. The middle of January, coming forward with a yes. capital request that we have seen happen the past right. few years. Well, I'm not pointing any fingers, any you place, guys. but <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It just happens. That's why we're, we're really having this conversation. Hard. Yes, we're trying early. But like, it's never early try enough. enough. You know? know, you think it's early. It enough. comes very fast. It well, comes this, up very December first is fine. I, you know, I think we can live with that easily. And, it's just that you know summer it's when is you like start planning for it and all of a sudden it's here you you know in say february 1st something blows the plan up and it it's does. like you're starting again so. i know i know but yes and, and we've found that when we're doing our um our we're doing our prep work for our bonding that it is important that the you know the capital plan, the plan is a, should be a plan it needs to they be look at it. that's right it USDA needs to be accurate it. it needs yeah. to be applicable it needs to be well you know it should have some funding information in there it just it needs a little bit more and they yep. were um barb that's one thing that she's we've been going back and forth with the um with the bonding <clears throat> folks on is the capital plan so right they want to see it a little bit more accurate yep okay well thank you guys um, Thank you both for coming in. Yeah. And we'll see what we can do about putting together a 
a meeting. A joint? Yes, joint I'd love a joint meeting. meeting. for yep. capital improvement, uh, yep. select and finance committee? I think it's worth, yeah, all of us in the room and just kind of pass so, through these projects. B but before we leave, did we have consensus that we're doing level services again? I mean, it seems like we do that. You, you know, know <clears throat> so uh, just to talk about that a little bit. Um, I mean, that's the goal, yes, because we want to control our costs. But, you know, uh, I think of, um, and maybe we'll talk about this a little later, but in a bit, um, but I think of different departments and, and, you know, nothing is stagnant. Things do change and their needs change. And I think of um, Highway for One um, and the need for maybe a part-time um, somebody to start doing some of the, the billing and stuff and freeing up a little space in our office with that task and freeing Kevin up, you know, so he can keep, keep well, his hair. Well, and then Kevin, um, I'll, uh, you know, there's a lot that they do. I always think a tree, the tree budget. You know, there's we all these little things trees. that um, need to be accounted for and reported out to, you know, DOT and the state and, and to our mm -hmm. office and all. And I, so I think, um, Level services is, is right, but it's also need to be a little bit nimble. If you can find a way to cut, great. Would love that to pull back some other oh, ideas. Yeah. But then if there, if you can find a way that would you know make the project or whatever your task in that department more agile, more up to date, you know, I mean, I just think it's important to look at that. So it's not. Yep. It's not rigid. It just needs to be smartly looked at, not like we we have all this money because we don't. Yeah. Um, but if there's a smart way to look this at it, this budget has been level or decreasing at our municipal budget, and so mm -hmm. our departments have been really, really good about they have. being creative they to well. keep delivering mm -hmm. the services. So I kind of, when we say level services, we really mean like yeah. figure out a way to de keep delivering for less. Because the Always. costs go up. But if but if there's a new idea or something yeah. that frees up that makes people you know, more efficient in the long yeah. run, we can serve our, our we residents can, better. We can get sweaters for everyone so that we can reduce the heat. The heat by two degrees. <laughs> um, I just so I think you know as far as the public you know the certainly um, I think our office gets the overflow of sort of the public works. Yes. Um, challenges because everything you touch when you leave your driveway belongs to public works and yep. in the last several months we've talked a lot about how to do more um, how to do more sidewalks how to do more uh, buildings or take care of buildings how to take care of more parking lots how to take care of more public spaces how to take care of more things so right. I just it's really want to be going. cautious when you say level services you know, That's and what then I meant you keep about saying that. we're going to do more and more and more. And I know because Kevin and I, there you is. know, and, and every there is more. we've had so many discussions about the and the constituents too. When I say discussions, constituents have had Coming discussions with us and Kevin a lot about yes. what their needs are and desires. So there I think are. we have to look at that. It's the sidewalks, it's the Leary lots, right. the new How EV parking can, stations. It's right. you know, there's if there's the ways downtown. we can save but still build. That I mean, we just. And then I want to make a pitch for the seniors. I really, mm -hmm. we have to look at the budget around the senior service delivery that right. we're doing. I have been going to the Council on Aging meetings. I've been, we have a senior work off group now. It's very active. Um, so we need to, um, you know, and that of course is shared with the other communities, but, but we have to, it's another place where we keep saying we're going to provide services, but we're not but, really funding right. them. And I then know. we don't really provide them and they're not, or we're trying to, we're just, it's not really working. And then we're just Kevin. And then we say, Kevin, can you hey, do this? Hey. Kevin, can you do that? <laughs> Kevin, can you do this? Now? So, Blowing um, them? again, it's yes. just, it's kind of kicking so the can. So that's what I meant, like yes, level I services, but I, I do want to keep open thought to the, some of this stuff. We are taking on more and more in this town and it, you know, at some point there's a limit on what you can do and the residents have to recognize that. And the that policy, you, you talked all. about the sidewalk policy. I think that we is imperative that we get that. We can drop that bomb now. Do you well, want I think we, <laughs> well, I think we've talked about it in different forums, but certainly with the, with the desire for people to have sidewalks, the constituents of the community have, and the businesses have to help us. Yeah, in order to have them. sidewalks, we need their help in maintaining them. Which so the idea, we've been recommended, many, many other towns do this, that you are responsible for the sidewalk in front of your home or your business if you have a hardship and you can't oh, yeah. do it you know we will you know we can assist but but generally there will be some type of you know there should Policy be a bylaw and some type of enforcement well, we it's had a, tough but we had a good meeting with um, DOT the other 
uh, fr a couple, yeah, Friday, uh, last Friday, um, <laughs> was it, or two weeks? I don't know, they go by yeah. quick. We met with DOT and talked about a lot of things about um, who, you know, who owns Sugarloaf Street, who owns the common. They own a lot of it um, because of it used to be a main So main when road. are they going to fix it? So the question is, <laughs> Actually, that who's going to own thing it? Was yeah, the sidewalks so, on Sugarloaf. So we've been having, so we're starting these conversations, and and they, you know, they're wanting them to understand that maybe we want to take ownership of some of that, but we would need them to bring all of that infrastructure up to code. So all new, you know, infrastructure under the ground, all new. New paved, new the, sidewalk, all that kind of stuff. But we, we are anticipating if they if if they will invest in upgrading and, and bringing everything up up to snuff and and new, then then we could take over. We would take over. We can't do anything, nothing in that town town because they own all of it except right. for that one little strip in front of right. Cheslet Park. Except you're required to maintain oh, everything yeah. above ground, right. regardless of your ownership. Yeah, so exactly. so there's no you're, yeah. So I think it's that's, it's been <laughs> struggle. So right. we're beginning those conversations with them to try and get get all that up to speed. So um, so a lot a lot of conversations are happening on a lot of that stuff. So. Um, so that was just that was the the capital discussion. Thank yep. you. Yep, and we threw in the sidewalk bomb. Yeah, well, that's a capital discussion. <laughs> it is, because we need sidewalks that's very right. bad. You know, very you know bad. the problem the town has been having over as long as I can remember is you have the school budget, then you have the rest of the budgets, and the rest of the budgets have always been getting the short straw. Yep. And, you know, as a town, we've got to look at it and say, wait a minute, they can't keep on getting the short straw. We've got to be providing a service to the town. There needs to be times where they have our backs to let us do what we need to do yep. and then we come back and support them yep. we've always been we've very, always supported the schools yes. it's not that we don't support the schools correct. but we also have to support the rest, the rest of, the of the town, town. correct it's not only education yeah but it's a huge part of what we do it's yep. over 70 cents of every dollar goes to education so that makes it hard to do the rest of everything with that that would I just so one of the things you might consider, given that um, you know in, in other uh, regional districts, they've gotten you know the select boards and finance committees have gotten together with the other towns, select boards and finance committees around school budgets, mm -hmm. especially at a time where Deerfield is is it's a significant part of your budget, like you said, about seventy percent, and you are going to be impacted by the Student Opportunity Act I being know. passed. You are going to we are going to be losing uh, Chapter seventy are. revenue, which means the towns are. Going to be expected to pay more into frontier system and you're paying nearly a hundred and sixty or seventy percent um, I think over it's foundation now. now. Yeah. So it's it's a heavy lift for the communities. And last year we had a lot of discussion in the towns individually about that. But when we got to the public hearing at Frontier, there was very little discussion about it's, this. It's, it's, it's a big, and it's so a big topic I think it's meaningful to, their head around it. It to takes a little while. at least talk to them about what that's going to mean to the communities mm -hmm. and the impact that losing the revenue is going to have. Yeah, I'm trying to um, get that because they you know the state is very excited that 1.5 billion dollars will be added to education but they don't really say where that money's coming from there's not a new or, pot of money well, Has, they haven't come up with it. a large amount of money you know, I, more I, equalizing where it goes some right. more help is going we, to the places that to, need we, it we still have to pursue the waiver and we also have to pursue um, the zip code um, you, you know the zip code straightening yes. I know. we really do yep i mean it's it's seriously going to impact us as much as people don't I mean, want to hear it regionally. It doesn't sound like a whole lot, but for the past 10 years, we've been receiving, in total, uh, $10,000 a year less each year yep. from state yep. in the, on, the, on the cherry sheet. Right. But it's going to be drastically um, more under this new... And, you know, well, well $10,000, but do it over 10 years, now you're talking 100000 bucks. That's a huge chunk of money. <clears throat> and... It's not getting any better. Right. We need yeah. to think bigger. I, I, I guess I've been doing this long enough that I remember when special ed was first on the uh, on the block. That uh, can remember having the state department of education come and tell us uh, that uh, 
we could expect that the special ed cost would be in the four to five percent range annually. Mm. And that yes, it would be an increase, but it was well worth the four or five percent. It would be. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm not sure what it is now, but I'm gonna say between what you see on the surface is in the 15 to 20% range. Mm -hmm. And when you actually look at the cost, breaking the entire cost out, and I've, all of that. it's been a while since I've done it here, but if you break the cost out into three pieces, the cost of direct costs for special education, the cost for, for other educational services, right. and then, the, and then the, the broad cost for maintaining the building, uh, the clerical, mm -hmm. uh, the superintendent and those other costs. Surprisingly enough, each one of those breaks up into approximately a third of the cost. And the In other words, special ed costs now are rivaling traditional education costs. Correct. And the need the needs of the students, the actual they needs are. they present are are exponentially larger. Just in even my four or five years on the school board. Um, it's actually shocking. It is. I mean, no one anticipated the services. I mean, we've had special ed for about 45 years now. Mm -hmm. and no one anticipated that the services that we are providing now would be provided. Yep. And the state just hasn't seen fit to cover those costs. Right. Despite the fact that they said they would. Yeah, they can't either. But then they said they would cover transportation costs for regional schools, too. Mm -hmm. <coughs> they haven't done that either. Nope. They're pretty good at unfunded mandates. Yes, yes. they are. Yeah. Or the other one, of course, was that they did fund for a number of years, was they wanted you to beef up the police departments and professionalize the police department. Oh, so they, and they took the Quinn bill away. The Quinn bill, and of course, they withdrew that. Yep. Now that everyone's excited, it feels good. <laughs> to feeling depressed. We'll move on. Yeah. So maybe you want to have a joint meeting, say, yes. like in early January? Is that what you're thinking? Is like sort or, of a budget, or, or do you want to do it? I would, I would like it sooner than that. Sooner? But, okay. Um, I didn't know if you wanted to wait till budget requests, you know, closer to that time or before that. The problem is the school's already set their budget by then, if you have it too late. Okay. So we're meeting the 4th, I think, the 18th. You want to Sometime the December would be. 18th of December, maybe? That's the a date we'd be meeting already. I don't know, it's, not, yeah, it's before the holidays. And, yeah. I think that's around the time the capital improvement planning normally meets, right? Wednesdays at. Yeah. Yeah. So if we could maybe join okay. the meet at five or something for them. Okay, and great. Do you think that's it. enough time? I think so. I mean, you mean, uh, you mean enough? soon enough? Soon enough, or um, no? Do you, do you think an hour or no? Oh, I no. think I think a couple hours. I would almost start. yeah push off the. I mean, I would start at five and then push off our, you know, select board if we have any business that night. I'm sure, we will, but a little later, so we could at least spend two two hours and maybe if we had to well, push it a little later, three. Tuesday, the day before Tuesday. Uh, I'm open to that too. I'm, I already got a meeting that night. You do. Yeah. Well, we'll try for that, the 18th, and then. Go from there. All right, so I'll say we, we can meet again. Last. We yeah. can meet again. I can't imagine this would be the last joint meeting. So maybe if we, on that, if we could start ours at seven that night, yeah. so we could okay. leave two hours at least to okay. do that. All right, great. Thank you. Great. So five o'clock, right? I just want to yeah. make sure I write that down. Okay. Okay, so that sort of concludes the budget kickoff section. Thank you. Great. Um, so we're jumping around a little bit here. So why don't we do Kevin? Yes. Um, well, so he's here, here for he a, likes waiting. He's here for a couple of things. C. Yeah, he's here. He's for here actually for A, B, and C. A, B, and C. So. <laughs> We so can we either can start do the, the engineering now or do that after the right away or there is one thing that did you have some discussion about the engineering you wanted to well um I'd like to hear I, I've gone through so I've got this is the engineering for the um for the sewer project 
and I've gone through all the USDA paperwork and Dave's paperwork, which is USDA's format. Um, then I had a meeting with Dave um, just to kind of answer a few questions and adjust a few things. Um, and then we have sent this um, whole packet whole packet out to uh, Lisa or, uh, at council. She went through it, made a couple of addition, you know, edits. Um, you remember what she said? It was, there um, it, it was very, it was just kind of protecting the town in a couple of bits of language, and I probably don't have it uh, listed out, I don't think, because I think I just got rid of my own one. I could pull it up. It was like, I think on page 20, it was like, you know, to the extent possible kind of things. It was very okay. minimal changes, so it was just protecting the town, was... and I think it was. It was something about lawyer's fees as well and then protecting that, of course. Okay. Uh, uh, but I didn't. 20. Um, oh, the post construction phase? Do you think that was when it was? Yeah, I mean, I can pull it up. Let me just see if I can find it. Wasn't, it but it wasn't substantial. It was not substantial. Okay, because I don't remember uh, let's see seeing anything here. that was yeah. kind of weird. Let me pull it up and I can show okay. you. I'll be around tomorrow. Uh, is this the corrected to get version? something done? Yes, what you oh, have okay. is the corrected version. And so this is different than what was emailed? Yes, it's all been up to date because it's gone through USDA's council, our council, our edits. Right, so council had it's edits and then David had to approve the edits, so he yep. reincorporated those edits. There's only a few it was, that yeah, she'd sent. Small. And I think I'd sent the, that out originally in the draft I'd sent yep. you, and then I updated the draft today. Or he, he had sent me an so, update draft. So, uh, let's see. So this is, yeah, let me put on my hand. So payments upon termination. Let's see. Cause, let me find it. Oh, six. Let me just find this here. Six. <coughs> Kevin, you had a chance to review this too? Yeah, um, actually I'd like to make the recommendation of moving forward with the um, contract as revised by uh, Council. multiple councils. Yes, and it was um, 6.08. Trying to find where it was. It was. It wasn't in the first section. Okay, here we go. Section six. Yeah, six. Are you looking for the, the changes? The changes. I think I it was know, six I had, point I had such a hard time finding them I too. Would, there were very few. It was six. There's only like three, and they were. Oh six. Embedded. And it was. Yeah, D, here we go. Hey, so what we did was limited this. So in section two of this, an event termination by owner for con convenience or by engineer for cause, engineer shall be entitled. And then she um, knocked out a lot of that paragraph. Okay. And just cleaned it up to protect the town a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so that was gone. And then it was a ways down that there was anything else. It's 97 pages, so it. I know. That's why I'm waiting for it you took to a while. It, <laughs> it took a while to review. <laughs> I know. And I don't. Remember. And it wasn't in red either, so it was hard I know. to pick out what it was. Well, it's good to just take your time then. Did you have any um, questions on it at all? Yes. Well, it's just the only issue I have with the contract is what latitude does the town have if we find something that we want to, through our education over the next year or two, that we want to change something? Yes, that's in design. We have all that latitude. So, I mean, we had the project. What's in, that going to do to our engineering costs? 
Well, it depends on it what you're tackling. So, so from my understanding, we have um, USDA is approved, and we have uh, captioned as engineering all the items that we wanted to tackle in the first phase of that project, the larger infrastructure at that plant. Mm -hmm. If we decide um, there's something along that that needs to revision, we have, you know, at 25%, 50%, probably by 75, you're done. But you have a little bit of time to make some changes in that. Well, the only reason I'm asking is mm -hmm. say that we, and I think we should do it within the next year or so, really do an assessment of Old Deerfield. Yeah, and which we have, but that, yes. That assessment conflicts with this to a certain degree. Do we have to yes, we have the ability time. to have that flexibility? Yes. Yeah, we do, because I think um, this is going to go through a year of design, and then so if we, I would like to start right away on tackling the other end and deciding what, what we're going to actually do, whether we're going to fix that plant, move it down, um, you know, I know we were talking about getting some help from the nonprofits as well to see if they will look into this with us um, because a large portion of that plant is served by that. Um, that part of our part of town is served by that. So I think um, I think they have a vested interest and I know in speaking with them that they do have a, a, a real interest in evaluating that. So if we can combine those two and I've had conversations with this with Dave Prickett's firm that that, that may be happening and we'd love you know, him to be open to those kind of revisions and updates. So I think we have we have plenty of time to do that. This is pretty straightforward. The engineering we're going to do here. Um, well, it's just my experience. The only thing worse than having two lawyers in the room is two in, <laughs> two engineers. Well, you'll need you'll need some oversight. Just, but yeah, you're yeah. right. I mean, so, we have USDA's engineers have have gone through it all. Yeah. And they're comfortable with this as well. And I think you know. Okay. But yeah, the, I know that we have some time to make some changes if we want to. We don't, okay. We don't have all the answers, but okay. And they'll find stuff as they're going through it as well. I'm yep. sure. Yeah. So if we sign this now, this this locks in the USDA. Yes. Funding. And it shows okay. them that we're committed and we're moving forward, and that. Um, so that locks in our money, the grant mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and the then model. so then I think we should reach out to the nonprofits mm -hmm. and um, get moving. And make sure they're in in the process with this. I agree. Yep. Um, and and there's a good oversight and good conversations and mm -hmm. stuff like that. There does. There needs to be a lot okay. of work on that. I I just want to make sure that we are because we've got to figure out at some point what we're going to do. And, yes. And or soon. Yes. And and you want to be able to adjust and compensate mm -hmm. one way or the other. Yep. Um, and if we really are going to do something on this phase two, we want to line up USDA right away. Exactly, and they're anxious to work with us. Again, I think they see us as good partners. And, um, well, so far, so yeah. that's why we have to keep- Keep on their good keep, side, for keep sure. Keep on the good side, but- And then also address some of the, you know, some of the uh, load that's going through that plant right now is, is very difficult for Keith to manage, depending on the day. And, um, you know, you can go down there and it's clear one day, the next day it's, you know, this much foam and fog and stuff all over the top of fats, oils, and grease. And um, we've got to get control of that. Our plant's not going to make it much longer, like, with that kind of fluctuation in load. So we have to have, you know, plans and discussions with what's going on there and what other opportunities are in town to come forward and help us with that. So Is uh, Keith making any headway on the second tank? Yes. Yeah, they're working on that now as we speak. Yep, yeah, I've, the, I've the seen the bills People have been through. working on it. And it's making this way. Okay. You know, which is which is good. I'm surprised they've been able to get as far as they can. Yeah. They've so far, I mean, it's difficult, stuff you know, trying, there. To, trying to get the man lifts in and out of the, you know, because they got to take him with a crane and put him down inside, so that way they can work on it. Um, you know, obviously, you know, once, once the water, a little bit of water in there, and. Now we're getting the freezing temperatures. Now we have to be cautious, you know, because obviously we want those things sitting in there all winter. So, right. Right. Um, so we have to be conscientious of what we're doing. You know, okay. You just can't just go ahead and throw salt in there to keep it from freezing. Right. Because then you're just going to destroy what you're already starting to try and fix. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, I think that's a huge call on being able to do that because that's going to save us. It is going to save us. It's going to save us ballpark about three hundred thousand dollars right off the bat. I hope so. Yeah. Um. So. So it, does that fit into the timeline? I mean, absolutely thrilling, oh, yeah. well, it's, thrilling it's, it's, to you, you have save no three hundred thousand dollars. But you, you've, you've got no choice. Yeah. Okay. This is, this is how it's it. going to work it's because otherwise it's not going to work. 
They okay. tried to put it out for bid, put it out for bid with other people utilizing or running that last end of the plant. There was right. only one person that came in, they were 1.2, which is more higher than we were going to do. We right. went back through, re-looked at what we could do. Keith started getting a little creative. He says, you know what, he's I think we can probably go ahead and make this work. It's gonna be sketchy, but he yep. being on his toes, he can make it work. Um, yeah. And then from there, it's it's again he can we can probably get this thing refurbed for less than fifty grand, compared to three hundred and thirty thousand for that was what the contractor put in for just to run it, just even to run that. that part of the plan. Right. So okay. granted, yes, at some point in time, is that going to be leaving or going away, destroyed, removed, whatever you want to say? Yeah. Yes, but do I want to take fifty five thousand and throw it away, or do I want to take three hundred and twenty five thousand and throw right. it away? Yeah, it makes it's, sense. To it's either either way you're throwing money away. This way, at least we're saving. Money. And I think it'll help us do In this first way. phase of the project. I mean, the, the secondary clarify, but also that you know the other stuff will have some help. Right. And some backup in the, in the meantime as we go through this other phase. Um, so this, and this could and this possibly is act as a backup if something uh, happens. This is this is not a Mine. full blown. No, no. This yeah. is this is a temporary. Let's get this. But it doesn't go directly into the, the river. Correct. Once the, the construction is done, you catch it. it will not yeah. be utilized anymore. Right. All right. So Good. yeah, it's it's just as if there was a portable system there. But once once the construction is done, it's not to be utilized because it's actually going to be part of. Phase two is that's right. going to be phased out. Right. Okay. That whole area. And then the secondary clarifier actually goes up further um, because it's a proper clarifier compared to the small rectangle, which doesn't work. That's why they put it in the other one. So, all right. So, in some aspects, it's good that 18 years ago when they did that, they didn't destroy it. Right. They left it. So. I mean, that's the system you're using at Old Deerfield right now. Yeah, and that, <laughs> that's sketchy at that's best. Uh, how, how, I'll be honest with you, how they're making permit. I don't know. Is beyond me. I, I, it's, it's amazing. That plant is in worse condition oh, it than is. this one, but it's just because of the load on it. This is obviously 75% of the town's down. Yeah, yeah, well, the kids, the kids are on vacation when you have the low water. Mm -hmm. low, low water in the summer is when you're going to have problems mm -hmm. with yeah. making permit. No, Which, right. Well, that's actually, it's been lately, it's been all of the trash and yeah. everything else is being put down through because you know because you think about it you got this huge big brown clarifier that we're talking and about you know over what? there we need and, to, and, we and here in deerfield south deerfield when you go to old deerfield you're talking about two boxes that are four and a half feet wide by That's by nine nice. feet long right here two but, of them but if there's significantly more stuff going in than just last year then we need to talk to the schools and make sure the schools are watching what the kids are putting down. Yeah, I would I would think, but again, you know as well as I do, which is another thing I'm gonna be talking about is the, the inserts that go out with the sewer bills, but the long, is, well, I don't wanna get into that. You guys still gotta- Yep, yep, we'll do this. Figure out what you're gonna do with the- And we'll move on. Yeah, okay. thank you. Well, we, do, we should address that though. Yes, we, I we agree, need, I agree. We need to do something that's yep. a little bit more formal. We can talk about that in a minute, sure. All right. So, uh, let's here. Let's make a motion to. Um, so I'll make a motion to approve the um, engineering contract for phase one of the wastewater treatment. And I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Let's see, you had two of these. I had two copies, right? So it'll be two. And we were signing two spots, right? Right, there's two separate signing pages. So just to follow up, can we follow up on making sure we have some formal discussion on um, what is going down the sewer? Yes, yes. And then also cool. how um, we're going to work with um, their consultants. Yes. Okay. So, so you have some, you're going to make some contacts on that? Set up some meetings. Yes, I will. Yeah. I will. I'll get working on me. that. Sure. Gonna, I mean, I you, I'm going to keep you in the loop on <laughs> it as well. Know. Yeah, we're going to work together. To we're going to work together on that for sure. Because yeah. um, I think that's something we have talked about a few times. The fog issue. We should really get yes. working on. Well, that. No, we're not. There's a thousand. We know times. there's only a few customers out there. <laughs> no, it's their end here. We've got it. We've got a major issue here. We got to deal with too. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. But the fog is that's okay. not just a few individuals. That's right. That's anything from Cooking. from from when you when you go to walk and it's as small as it sounds, 
you go ahead and you, you dump your grease into a into container, which is great, put it in the freezer, and when it's full, get rid of it. Hopefully that's what everybody's doing. In the trash. Um, yeah. But if you're not wiping it out and actually throwing it away as a solid waste, every little bit, little bit, little bit, it builds up inside, and that's where I get my backup. So once I start getting a backup, it goes into somebody's house, and once it goes into somebody's house, then we have to pay thousands of dollars to fix it. Mm -hmm. So like I said before, every time that somebody flushes something down the toilet, that doesn't come out of your body, and it's not a piece of toilet paper, you are poisoning the system. You are causing everyone to pay more money. You're poisoning yourself. Would you purposely, I mean, do you think people would, if, if they really thought about it, walk outside and just start taking fight all the bills and throwing them out and let the air blow them away? That's what they're doing. That's why these things cost so much money, is to try and fix what they're flushing down. It's ridiculous. Underwear. Um, the, the hygiene products, dental floss, dental floss is killing us. It's unbelievable. It mm -hmm. gets wrapped around that. The flushable wipes. The only ones I've been able to find so far, they're called dude wipes. And dude wipes are considered a, a biodegradable. But it's not a biodegradable to the point that it's going to biodegrade before it hits our plant. It may biodegrade further down the road, but it's not a deal where, like toilet paper, you think about it, toilet paper hits the water, disintegrates up a little bit, no big deal. That's what plants are designed to do. They're not designed for people's garbage. And that's what they're treating our system as, is garbage. And it's costing us money. Sorry. <laughs> Sing it, sister. <laughs> uh, and speaking of which, kind, kind of tack on that too, we're getting ready to put out our, when billing goes out, the sewer bill goes out at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I failed you, I meant to make, bring some copies with me tonight, but. Um, I'm sure David will probably say it because he's on the system. But long story short, is there's a small little flyer that goes out with it, the do's and the don'ts. Yeah. And I just didn't know if there was something you guys wanted to review quickly at some point. I would like to. And, and see if there's something else you'd like to add to it or, or take away. Yep. Um, you know, unfortunately, when, when that does go out to, you know, I, I know there's some people, the, the landlords say, well, 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 I don't show this, I don't share my bill with, with my we'll tenants. Separate paper well, you know then. what? Well, this little piece of paper you can. Right, you know, separate uh, paper. It's, it's, it's. Are you going to have it printed on like lime green or? Oh, it is. It's obnoxious. It's, oh, it's okay. orange. It's green. It's. Okay. It's. Yep. Oh, trust me. We. It's been years. <laughs> Smiley faces. Little ugly faces. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Uh, I don't know what else to do besides go and slap them upside the Put head. Put dollar yeah. bill signs on it. A dollar bill signs yeah. on it. It says right there. Your name. This. Your it money. It cost you more money. Your money. Yeah. They take it and flush it down the toilet. Right. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? And that'll dissolve a hell of a lot faster than most of the other stuff. Yes, it will. Oh, my God. Yep. Yeah. So, sorry. No. Okay. It's good, Kevin. It's good. Okay. So, moving on. Um, Vote uh, plan to address right away easement road issues, issue requests for proposals for Merrigan Way. So we want to talk about that okay. a little bit. Do you guys have some maps in front of you? We do. Okay. Um, do you want my two cents? Sure. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not in favor of separating out the land. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to sell it as one track of land because as is? As is. Well, no, because I think we want to talk about uh, a couple of things. Um, easements for sewer. Correct. And um, I think the water issue is done, correct? Water issue is completed. So correct. for anybody that goes in there and Dumont and ours, everybody's got hooked up. Correct. We're good to go. We're not encroaching. But sewer to your building runs across this property. Correct. So we need an easement for that. And um, let's see. We need see. to make sure that the easement is still good for the sewer coming out of pilot. Um, yes, that's, yeah, I'm very concerned you know, to make know, sure that. I know there goes across there. I know there was do, an so, of some kind, but I do not know because that was not, wasn't do, my deal. So do you I know, know where it goes? Gone, but I want to make sure that it's taken care of. Do you know where the sewer, sure can you come on up as well? I'll show you exactly where it goes. Oh, you do. You know as well too. Oh, yeah. Thanks. He knows better because he's the one to put it in. Oh, oh, good. You may want to just go. Yeah. Yeah. You can come around up. I was just trying to figure out where. So, um, Dumont's is here, yeah. and, and I think ours kind of comes across here somewhere. Yeah. But so Dumont's, there is a sewer manhole 
Can I draw? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And sure. then it comes to a sewer manhole at the back of the property, and then there's another sewer manhole somewhere over here. And you have an there's one right here too. You have an existing one that we tied into. Yeah. It has a 15 inch interceptor, so we dropped the manhole here, ran down here. They ran to the building. So it cuts okay. across the rear of the property. So this will need an easement, right? And we already have an You easement. have that easement We already. filed that easement on the property with the uh, New England Natural Base. So area. will that carry over carry onto, onto our? Yeah. Okay, so, good. Yes. Yeah, it's good. on the deed to work. Oh, and there yeah. was also a Ours is easement. not. Ours is not. So no, there was a drainage easement, easement also easement. through the back of here for storm drainage. Okay. The water line stops right here. Yeah. Dead ends. And then this was an extended easement for getting into for, your parking lot, for right? right? Yes. Right. What is the we want to solve what are the thoughts of the carrying road. Merrigan Way right yeah. out to here? Yeah. Well, here's 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 my recommendation. Mm -hmm. At the very least, I go to the end. Then that way, whoever yeah. I mean, because realistically, whoever comes in here, they're still going to end up having access to this area. Mm -hmm. Gives this guy access to his property mm -hmm. instead of having to go through a right of way to yeah. get to it. Now it's up to the town to decide whether they want to have the appetite to control this, this exit coming out or in. Because if you sell this property as is, mm -hmm. they have that, which means now all they have to do is ask for a driveway permit. I mean, granted, they got to go through DEP or DEP mm -hmm. and conservation and everybody else to cross the brook. But what does it cost for the town to do that and carry Merrigan Way right out to here? Um, well, I'm, I'm thinking just, I, I don't, I'm not making the recommendation at this point to carry it through all the way. My recommendation is to ability. at least but I think retain it, right. yeah. so that way you have the you have the ability. But at the very least, my recommendation: you got to extend this yeah. road. Yeah, you do because you right. need to make it a legal parcel. Right no, now, you don't that. have it yeah, on a public no way. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. and you don't have yeah. full frontage. Yeah. You just have an yeah. easement. Yeah. It's a non-conforming. Basically, made it a non-conforming lot. Right. So, so the, the other thing you might want to consider with your sewer manholes, I know how shallow that. Yeah, it is. is actually trying to get back down here somehow. Tie back into you. So again, again you'll have the road. If you take right, this road, exactly. you'll have the right and I can do it around. And you can drop yeah. a doghouse manhole right over our pipe, yeah. and then you won't have your. I won't have my sewer freezing issue. Yeah, because because my sewer freezes annually. Mm -hmm. Well, then we need to fix that. You know, it's yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so then, what yes, is? I know. Uh, <laughs> I can't, I, I can't believe that. that well, I'm the just, only reason, and here again, my that. thought process, even though this is my house, mm -hmm. um, is that it'll alleviate a lot of traffic on Sugarloaf Street mm -hmm. if we open this up. And downtown. Sure. Because Sugarloaf Street, Grant, you just put 70 houses in there. Right. And there's a lot of traffic going down it already. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, they're trying to come through the center of town. Yeah. But what they're doing now is, so now you're going to take everything that's on Thayer Street and you're going to put it right in front of the garage, which I only have 16 feet from my door to the edge of the road, if that. What do you mean? You mean you think cars are going to come in? Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they, they come flying through there now already. Yeah. Because they come through, because they don't, they don't go through the right-of-way here anymore. They come through here and they go over yeah. and they make their shortcut through there. Yeah. yeah. Really? What if it could yeah, there's be a, a lot of traffic. Oh, yeah, I, I, bet, I bet there's probably... Without exaggerating, well over 100 cars a day. So if it's, yeah. Yeah. what well, if it's a gate? So if you had a gated, yeah. yeah. But you know, again, this is what, whatever you guys would like to do, that's up to you, however you want to mm -hmm. proceed with this. Um, you know, but again, because my, my two recommendations, these were my recommendations, is if you wanted to put a line across there that brings it down to uh, about 1.2 far right here, brings this down to just about, uh, and eight, eight acres. Um, this right here, if you took all of that, that would be 0.84 acres, which would make this 7.2 mm -hmm. something. Um, so which, which I know this right here is all included in that number. No, no, that this right here is not included in that number. This oh. right here is just this number here. Okay. Because I took, I basically took that number there. This is this is 1.24. Yeah. And and here's the thing is, now let's just say hypothetically, mm -hmm. okay. Because looking, looking outside the box, I know there's multiple people that are looking at this now, which, mm -hmm. is, which is great. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, taking this part away, but, but, but shaving off a section over here, when you sell, when it goes out, both parcels go out at the same time. So if somebody that wants this doesn't want to bid high enough, then they don't get it. Mm -hmm. That's 
just a thought. Yep. And now whether that's going to restrict who's actually going to come in. That's the key. And and go for it. There's a there's a you know. I, I think I would like I to know. keep it as one piece. And coach is and not a legal. Coach way. is coach is not an actual legal because once basically once you get past the Polish club. Yeah. That's all private property. Yeah, okay. So we can't. Okay. Um, so we can't. So you really can't. I'm, I'm thinking that we might want to keep it as one part and then evaluate who brings it forward. You know, you, you need the economic multiplier. So mm -hmm. I, I want to make sure we're getting a good local company that's going to bring bring, bring good jobs and a number of jobs mean. because you know that means that Frank Morrill's garage is going to get more cars. That means more rest. People are going to go over and have lunch somewhere and. They're going to buy gifts at birthday presents at Daylily or whatever. I mean, there's a huge multiplier. So I want to see who we get and then evaluate them on that. And maybe that they would, person doesn't need the full acreage and they could peel it off. And, you know, obviously by who's but in I do attendance, want to support, I'm assuming do want this to support is local something business. that Vern wants to talk about. Right. So right. And What's that? That's not supporting it. You're no, no, no. Yeah. We don't want to shut you out. No, it's how is it forcing you out if I don't sell that land? If that gets cut off, mm -hmm. I have no way to get trucks in and out without creating a real mess downtown. So the tractor trailer trucks will have to back out, starting at the pharmacy. Can you come up and show me? Can you show? Can you get a better map? Because this doesn't show Vern's property at where's all. Where's that yeah, big right map here. that I have? This is Vern's right here. But where's the road coming? Right. Well, the road is over here. And there's one underneath. That's, it, I think. that's right. Vern, that's can you give me that? Oh, here we go. Yeah. This, yeah. Wow. So Vern, show so show us what you. Right yeah. So the tractor trailer trucks would have to back, starting at the pharmacy, and they'd have to back down Coates Ave from South Main mm -hmm. to get in here. And that includes FedEx, UPS, all the people who oh have big gosh. trucks. There's okay. no way. We all have right. five to ten so deliveries they, a day. So they oh, come in here and okay. tractor okay. trailer trucks. Okay. I, I'm asking for this because this allows the trucks to turn around and, and then it doesn't mess up downtown. So how That's, so right right now the trucks come in here and we'll we'll do a circle correct in the parking lot and out. Yeah. How would you set up the property here? If you had it, or it, whether you were the one to purchase it, if yeah, something yeah, no, happened, of course, of course. right. So, if, if by chance you did own this mm -hmm. property, how would you set up the property, and what would you do with it? I wouldn't change anything. This is, I mean, I would leave it just as it is, so the trucks can turn around, and it gives me, just as you see here, some room for parking. Which, if this ends at the bridge, I have very little room for parking, and. Uh, mm -hmm. There's just not a lot of real estate. Right, because you, you park here these, now anyways, right? Lines. It goes right behind the building, right yep. behind this building. And yeah, this, oh, I this is all stream. Yeah. You don't yeah. have any room You here. have no ability to do I know you're packed in there because I've toured your, your yeah. spot before. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, so you use this right now for Absolutely. parking and then you loop the trucks around. I tried to negotiate with uh, New England Central Bakers, but of course they didn't want to, they didn't know what they were doing, so they weren't going to More prepared negotiate. to negotiate. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's really what's going on here. But if we don't do that, then it really is kind of forcing us to find somewhere of, else. So, oh, gosh. Well, we trucks. don't want to do that. So, I mean, we all the things that you mentioned. I know. I already I know. have 40 people here. Yes. And I've had, we've been here for 35 years. Right. Well, I know. I didn't mean that. <laughs> okay. I, I just didn't. I felt like you would, would be getting a better deal if we. What if you made this right away? Come through. Just the right away for a road. What is uh, that? isn't wide enough for tractor trailers. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a house, right? That's a, did, that's and, a you know, driveway yeah, now. The, uh, that's actually very narrow. And when it was open for the pickle shop, there was nothing but complaints. And those were just straight jobs coming in most yeah, of the time. Do, do, is, this con, is this still a road, or can we discontinue Jewett? it? Or what's the deal here with this thing? I believe Jewett's a, a right away at this point. It's a right away to the property, or so that's what's going on. I have a question about Coates. At one point, Coates Ave went all the way through to um, Sugarloaf Street. And no, actually, on some maps, it right. still exists on, on all the way through. But the people that have that as part of their driveway have said no through traffic. But that was a road at one time. 
You mean co Jew it. coach? Jew it or coach? Coach. All the way through from from Do you mean Jew it or coach? Coach. 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 Went all the way through. It's on a lot of maps that I've seen. Yeah, but coach I thought was a private property. Coach, coach, coach ends at the at the brook. Yeah, the brook. Yeah, it does. Because the, the rest of it was, was owned privately. It wasn't a private. It was a road. It wasn't wasn't a public road. It wasn't a right of way. It was private property. That was the pickle shop. The pickle shop had a right of way to be able to go in off of Coates Ave because at that point in time, they owned that section of it. So when Vern purchased that section, basically from, oh, and those the, buildings and from, stuff. The, yep. from the Polish Club parking lot to the, what do you call it? That is now private property. That is not public property. It's not a public road. Okay. And then right when you come to Julia, that's all, part, Julia that's all Ave, private. it's just a right of way to get in and out of the property is all that was. Okay. And it's, it's a right of way. It's never been a town road. It's always been private property. Um, that's what's going on. That's do, you, do you foresee needing all of this? Or wh what would work? Um, I guess it is all of this, huh? When you turn the truck this around and like looking at the size of these acres cars. right here. I mean, we could, yep. this could creep down. Uh, right. And just, all, again, all I need it, is enough you room need to, to turn around. Yeah. How about, I, I would be supportive to sell you mm -hmm. because I, I, I do appreciate the fact that you've been in town. We've got to put it out. And you have a, and, yeah. right. Yeah. But I would be in support of separating it out for, um, if we could narrow down what your real needs are. Okay. Um, if you could come with a, if you could, Give us the design. I mean, I really want this to go out to bid. Indeed. So. Um, yeah, I want to support that too. Yeah, uh, so. so I could put that together. <sighs> Yesterday. Is that work for you? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we really want to get this out. As soon out. as you can, uh, just kind of lay out where you think um, max you would need. Yeah. Spatially. If you could actually just lay out. Your actual cul-de-sac kind. I'm, I'm assuming all you need is a cul-de-sac, right? Kind of thing. Or maybe or, a loop because the trucks are a lot bigger, right? They got or, 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 it's it's gotta be. allows us a little bit of room for growth to put a right. If you were going to put right, a building right, up or something, right? Right. right. Yep. No. Yeah, I just want to mention. That. Yeah. Sure. Sure. But I, get that. I mean, maybe we could, you know, do something like this, you know, whatever. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll look at that and see what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If cool. we yeah. can, if we can, just. Keep it yeah, um, shave it down a little yeah. bit so that the lot is as big as possible. I'm not saying that, mo you know, you might mm -hmm. be able to negotiate with whoever. Somebody else. Yeah. Somebody yeah. Else but, to pay for it, so. Right. To, mm -hmm. The problem is you get, if we narrow it down too too yeah. small, then that really limits who is interested. And, um, but I see the need, so. Yeah, I see the Thank need, Thank you for too. pointing that out. And, and, okay. I, and it wasn't like we were not appreciative of, of you <laughs> being in town. Um, and being a long-time employer, seriously, and taxpayer. Okay. That and helps. All right. All right. The Ritz. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, we need. Okay. Yeah, we, we need do. To get out. So if if you could get with Kevin, well, maybe, and and get that to us, what really would it do fast. to the RSP? Just put it in two parcels and so. <clears throat> well, I think I th it sounds like what you want to do. I think, and I mean, Kevin can can win, but we when we lay out the road, even do you want to? Do we need to get that surveyed, or like no, how do we get yes. that onto the plan? We need to get it on the plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we need to. Get, I think we need to commission so a survey a right time. now, and we need to we need to get these things on the plan, mm -hmm. and then be done right. Yeah, because once you because you, when you put the RFP out, you're going to reference the plan of yeah, land, yeah, and it's so got to be need surveyed to have right. That, you know, yep. completed. So okay, let's. Okay. We'll light a fire. Yeah, and, and, the, and the north end of the, you know, yeah. that, that was just kind of like a line drawn in the sand, just a ballpark. Right. You know, that 1.24 is definitely not a solid number of what. Well, no, I guess that's it. why. Yeah, whatever that's why works if you best could, for a turnaround. If, right. if Vern could just shave it down to yeah, yeah, right. exactly. minimal. No, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll work with him okay. and see what, what works for him. I mean, that. I understand the whole trip. The, we want to minimize any traffic issues for the future, for sure. And I think if you would support us if getting a survey, a yes. surveyor, yes. so either through con uh, contracted can services we, or whatever can we, we get this done, opened up, like ASAP. Could just come down. <laughs> Here's a quick question: Is this? We can actually wait till the other two are right there. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that they're aware of what my thought is. We're bringing a <clears throat> if we bring in a surveyor. Can we bring in a surveyor to also at the same time while we have the services to go ahead and lay out the Leary lot? 
Yes. To know exactly what we've got. Yes. Yes. And that so was that on way, our pins are put in. We know exactly yes. which direction we're going in to kind yeah. of go along with that. And I'm not trying to supersede too far into it. But yeah. But if I we're going to be doing something at the Leary lot, we need to start thinking about how deep we're going to get into it. Right. What, what we want what to you look plan like. on doing? Do you yeah. want the rain gardens? Do you want the, the tree boxes? Do you want the uh, pervious pavement? All yeah. these things have yes. a cost to go along yes. with them they do. because yes. pervious pavement, you have to have proper drainage that goes underneath it. I have to have proper anyway, at the very least, because well, we right now it's all it's mud. What? Yeah, it's mud. So, so realistically, at the very least, you got to get in there and you got to take out at least two feet. Kevin, I think that's very smart because the next round of MVP money is in January. Right. So if we can get this done, if we can do this immediately because we need this, I, I think it makes sense so if that's that all right with you guys about yeah. to do the Leary lot project. because without the survey for the Leary lot, we can't get the exact numbers right. yeah. for um, the MVP grant application. Yeah. And do you have really somebody might, I'm trying to think of the last guy who did this. He's done this a couple of times. I don't know if he's still around or is there anybody else? Uh, all right, we'll look I'm around. See what, yeah. see what we'll, we'll, do, we'll do a scope and then okay. we'll, yeah. Okay, do a scope and let us know. Okay. But we'll do it, we'll pronto. We've had enough. Okay. So the Leary Law and That's the um, American Way Thank property. You. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, so moving along, we're going to address the recycling policy at the transfer station, revise annual non-compliance policy. So I had that somewhere. So, so Vern, you, you'll you'll connect with. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Thank um, you again. Just sure. make sure there's good conversation as far as and, and we'll get it surveyed out. So I see here. And Vern, you must already, because I've known you for a while, you have something in the back of your mind already for square footage of a building that you're thinking about maybe putting there, right? Yes. Oh. Okay. So I will put that down too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Future Great. plans. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thank guys, you. for coming in. Um, yeah, so we just want to um, you know, kind of run to revisit that. We've had some discussion about um, the recycling, uh, what's happening with the recycling. Uh, you know, we have groups that come in and, and take some of the recycling out and use that for um, for fundraising efforts. We haven't, you haven't really had a policy, we but haven't. we want to talk about that. And then Kevin wanted to, we have some announcements coming about the transfer station and recycling, and so it's all kind of part of that. Do you want to take and run with it, or do you want me to read this? Or <laughs> uh, well, well, here, let me let, let me let me let me top off on a couple of things. All right, that. that'll, sure. that'll, that'll kind of <laughs> sure help things move along a little bit. Okay. All right, so. Um, so the, the food waste recycling or the composting, mm -hmm. um, because of the size of what it was, because of how popular it was, um, we basically doubled the size of the, Thank you. the container. Thank you. Um, but it's funny, the past three weeks, we have noticed a dramatic drop in usage. Huh. Um, because I've actually got um, James, he's counting. He's paying attention to stuff up there. He's giving he's he giving me lists of things of what's going there, on. Um, so the long story short is is, is do you think I'm, it's a seasonal I'm, thing? I, I don't know. I'm just afraid it's not. I'm what I'm afraid of is, is maybe it was just a novelty thing. Oh yeah, this is really cool. Yeah, I'm going to be green. Well, I don't want to be green anymore, and huh. then move on to something else. That's what I'm hoping like, it's not. I'm, I'm hoping it's something different. But all through yeah, the summer, it was like it overflowing is, it is, by by noon. It was full. Yeah, no, not anymore. Not even close. Yeah, well, well I think then we need to, um, you know, we need to have some kind of campaign to keep people, you know, using engaged. It. Yeah, because yeah, actually that came up in the meeting today that I attended. Um, DEP, um, how they rank towns and give them grants, mm -hmm. and you know how. I mean, we don't get a lot of money, but we sometimes are eligible. We get points, and, mm -hmm. and, and we get they're going to give more points to the composting now than ever before, mm -hmm. because that's going to count towards the governor's. There's only like three. There's three categories we're not presently right now. We're not eligible for, because we don't accept oil or antifreeze, yeah. and we're not going to. Good. Um, we don't have a reuse shed, which is another category. But with that being said, we just got awarded a six thousand dollar grant from DEP to go ahead and purchase and put a reuse shed together. Well, that'd be nice. Nice, but the issues I, I have is it has to be well attended. Attended for the simple fact is, is and, and I'm not trying to put this the wrong way, but there's going to be a lot of people in town. They're going to drop stuff there because they right. don't want to pay the $5 or $10 or whatever it is to put it in the bulky item bin. Right. 
right. you know, and Should because I, think about this is because every time we pick up something, it's going into the bin yep. and collectively we're paying for it. Right. So um, my understanding on the reuse shed, if you put the reuse shed, you can have your attendant it has to okay the oh, oh they're going item. to. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, this is not a deal of you're just going to come and drop and right, no, you good. will you will have to be authorized to be what worthy, it is. worthy of the item. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I mean, I can see somebody coming and dropping, oh, I got I got uh, 152 uh, uh, lids, right. you know, plastic lids that I don't want to do this or do that with. I have to throw them away and I don't want to pay to get rid of them. Right. I mean, I know that's kind no, of extreme, but it is, it's, yeah. it's some of the stuff that you see up there, it's very similar to the wastewater treatment plant. You'd be amazed what, what goes what through the... Through that place up there. No, I, I have faith in so you that, guys to make so, sure that's so right. So we are getting more points than we well, well if 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 we accept because okay. this is one of the things that, that I'm kind of coming to you as is if we accept the grant from DEP mm -hmm. um, for the reuse shed, which um, again I would recommend. I mean I think, I think it's so a good too. thing. I think it is a good thing. Um, I think it's a good I thing. There's so much I, that I, I want to bring I mean, you. Because when there's good stuff for somebody else to use. Yes, absolutely. I mean I, I'll be honest with you, my house, you know, when when I go through stuff, yeah. I if if it's decent, I'll put it out front. Free. Right. Take People it. People will take it. Yeah. You know, and, and if somebody can get a reuse out of it, I'm all over that. You yes. know, then that way we need to A I don't have to pay that. to get rid of it and B I'm not it saves on the carbon know, and exactly all environmental that. whole nine yards. Yeah. So I mean I think I think that's kind of a no brainer, but yeah, I've known some people that actually came back with more than they went with. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I went to a swap meet the other week, and I was told not to come back with more than what I left with. I know. My you mother would always make my go with my so. father. But I think it's, it's worthy, it's sure. and, um, you know, with all the climate change, and we don't need yep. to be producing more stuff that people can reuse. That's well, smart. Well, it's just that DEP is really clamping down, and they are going to give more grants. They are going to do more of this point this system. This is great. And, and they are not going to support towns that don't do anything. That's so right, and we want to do that, I, our best. Uh, yep. That's why we really have to push the composting, because my understanding is the composting is going to be the most Right. Uh, well, well, here's the thing, is, 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 as long as, and this is going to sound, kind of sound sad to say, but as long as the composting is there and it's available, yeah. we get credited for right. it. Right. Whether, whether we produce or not. Whether yeah. we produce a pound well, no, they're or a million ton. No, they're going to start tracking it. Okay, well, yeah, they could, but it at start. present time. Right. So, yeah. But I think, I think we, can, we can juice that up a little yep. bit, too. Yep, but. definitely. Yep. Um, and to kind of go along with the recycling, um, I mean, I think it's been kind of said in the past, but I'm really not sure if it's really been documented, per se, is if something goes into the metal bin, it stays in the metal bin. If it comes out of the metal bin, that is theft of town property. It's a larceny. Yeah. Bottom line. Because we make money that. on that. Yeah, that's right. Okay, and then so now when it comes, the huge set, the use shed would be good. Exactly, if it can go there first if it doesn't get gone. Exactly, and because it's free to put in the metal bit. Because so. there's a lot of people that would like to go through and they look for the aluminum. Yeah, because in, in the copper, in mm -hmm. the things that they can go ahead and recycle or turn in and make money off of. Well, right. that's town money. Right. That that'd be the like me. That, that'd be like me stealing gasoline and turning around and reselling it. Right. You know, I think I'd lose my job. No, it for helps. That. It helps offset our uh, expenses. At exactly. That point, so you know, because that is all considered part into into the that. Now, again, kind of going along with that, it's it's always been kind of a a a non written policy per se of allowing some organizations to go in and separately off to a side, not pick through, but separately off to a side have containers where people can donate their recycling. Mm -hmm. You know, and presently right now, um, um, it's uh, uh, Nancy Sadowski, you mm -hmm. know, and, and the things that she does with that money, you know, it's Relay for Life, mm -hmm. you know, it's supporting the library, it's supporting different things, but we really don't have anything. I have a policy for have it. a policy, and I think right. we really should, and so that way it's fair for everybody all the way around. Right. And then that way it's, it's there, there's no question about it. So, you know, I, I, I'm not a really rules and regulation kind of guy, but I am for the simple fact is, is if you've got the policy there, then there's no, there's no gray area. There's no questions about it. This is what the rule is, and if you want to change the rule, then this is what you're gonna to do to change it. But right now, this is the way it is, and this is what you're gonna do. Yep. Do we so. have anything written up on that policy yet? Is that, that's not here. But no, I know we, we discussed it a really. little bit. And, right. Uh, we, we don't have any policy about, about the, the, recycling um, the recycling piece. And I think we need we to. We just have a non-compliance policy about yep. the use of the transfer station. Right. And I think, but I agree. It needs, we do need to be fair. And I'm grateful for all the work that 
you know, is being done with that recycling now, and, and maybe that's all that happens, but m maybe there's somebody else that needs to that, you know, take advantage right. of the Frontier well, track or right. whatever. Well, because well, I know the volleyball be. team for the longest time was, was I, doing. Yeah, I see. And then, then they just kind of yeah fiddled off and maybe they, I, I yeah think exactly. And then that's sign. when Nancy kind of took over. I think we should have a sign. Well, that's where your policies come into play. Yeah. Is, is you dictate where exactly what the, you want, and then so that way it's all set. Well, now it can be changed, or we could vote yeah. to change whoever. Exactly. What I'm thinking but is that you would need to have it um, long enough so maybe it's a four month. Uh, cycle or a six month cycle or whatever it might be where where that um, that um, what do I want to call a um, I would personally myself I'd almost go with a year and the reason why I say that is, is and the reason why I say that is because whoever ends up getting the winter six right. months yeah is going to get short change because that makes recycling that doesn't makes happen so as much. That's fine. It, so it sounds kind of strange, no, but that's true. I mean, you know you think about people people don't want to do it yeah. blah 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 in summertime yeah. people, people are sold more. Yeah. yeah. Plus, there's a cyclical um, thing to fundraising too. So it's that true. Way so I think so. The, that's what it meant. But so but uh, it would need to be where a um, 501c3 or or whatever uh, organization mm -hmm. um, uh, charity right. wanted to apply, um, they would write an application which we would make, and then um, we would decide who would get that for the year, mm -hmm. or maybe it would be a lottery. Or right. we, we have to work mm -hmm. that out. And then um, they would have the ability to collect for the year, and then after the year is up, they'd have another opportunity well, and, to put their name also, in. Also, um, we have to have some policy that to make sure that they actually do the collections. Correct. Because mm -hmm. if yeah. we vote or they forfeit. for a year, right? right. Yeah, you, you're out. You, you're right. holding have somebody no, out. Yeah, you, we don't want any problems. I'm sure we can any. get this together mm -hmm. fairly yeah, quickly. Yeah, I could give and, you a draft yeah. of that. I okay. we had created something like that in another community that I'd. Yeah. And we had a very similar problem, or not problem. It's a it's a great challenge, but a lot of age, a lot of uh, groups wanted to take the recycling for fundraising. So right. the town, uh, the board had to basically do that. I, and it would need to be the only, any, like I said, the only thing that there. I remember as being a problem is that sometimes, if if it was a, a youth organization, they they weren't always good about doing the collection. Right. 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 So it then is if a they aren't on their behalf right. too. Right. If they, so they aren't, then they you know they're not oh, favorable right. the next time. Or if it, there's so many right. weeks go by and no one's collecting or being benefit from it, they would get a notice and then yeah, yeah, yeah. we could we come up with that language. Okay. Better. It makes sense to do that, and then that people then that is the one organization mm -hmm. charity that would have that ability and everybody for knows what's going on right there's there's yeah. no question they can make there's a no, sign they know where they he can said, bring she the said because you know how things work in this town it's it's rumor mill and mm -hmm. and people point fingers at each other and oh they're doing this oh no not doing it. it's it's just it, we'll it's, get it straight exactly it's then straight you know. it's 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 a policy it's a procedure and and it just makes everything go yeah. so much smoother there's and anybody no can questions. apply that wants right. to do that I mean, so, and presently, right now, there's only one. I mean, it's only Nancy. You know, nobody else. Nobody's banging on the door to correct. Also say, hey, can have, we also do this or whatever? She would know. at least have a set of rules that she could exactly. follow and know what's you going know, on. And that way, it's fair for everybody all the way around. Yep. So there's no favoritism. Nobody's being mean to somebody or right. or, or discriminating against them. Yep. It's it just it just makes things so much easier on okay. my part. Okay. Sounds good. Um, and the then, only other thing I'd like to touch on real quick, if I could, is. Speaking about the transfer station, brush. We are one of three towns out of 351 in the state of Massachusetts that's allowed to have a brush dump. Yeah. Our brush dump's about full. Now. I don't want to close it. <laughs> okay, then, then I need to come up with somewhere between fifteen and $22,000 a year. To burn it? To grind it? No, I'm not allowed to burn it. You can't it. burn it. Darn. To grind it? Can't use at, it as a drill? What hmm? about the other talk about all this stuff? called the biomass biomass oh, oh good well have them Can come we in have, have 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 everybody that's delivering it to our transfer station yeah bring it to wherever you say me. you need they need it <laughs> that would be me. So. i got nowhere else you know for a lot of the people residents i'll speak for residents i don't have a back 40 I can just push the stuff out to. Exactly. I'm a postage stamp lot, yeah. and unless, you know, and I have a massive pile of leaves in the backyard because I don't have a truck well, either. Leaves, I don't so, have a problem with because leaves, yeah. leaves, grass clippings, leaves, and then grass, you get the stuff like that. branches and stuff that come out of the It's the branches, or it's the large I mean, because trees. Coming realistically, in. we're not supposed to be accepting anything bigger than four inches. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, that's. That, 
Anything bigger than what? Four inches oh. in diameter. No. I'm just thinking of like what comes down. I and, saw. And, I got and, some nice winter greens out of there this and weekend. And unfortunately, so. it's the, the guys do their best that they can, but there's times that people slip in, yeah. and they're dropping trees. Trees. Worth really? of small logs. Oh yeah, it's it's. We'll get some nice if, if you, that's that's Four why really once cool. once we it's finally. Four inches is. Yeah, yeah. Let me back up one more. So. We, we have finally gotten the DEP authorization and approvals for um, a different use of the, of the, the transfer station, yep. which we had to wait for, which is basically why the defense has not gone up yet, Correct. because I had to wait, yep. because yeah, we were battling, land. I shouldn't say battling, but we were going back and forth where they were saying, no, you have to have land ballast ones, you can't, and I'm like, my opinion is 98% of those posts that are in the ground, I'm reusing. Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna pull them out and put new ones back in again. Right. One, two, if, if I am in anything according to all of the maps, I'm in just the, the old burn pit area. Right. And I'm There's not no in fill. the actual capped refill. Right. Or landfill. Um, so with that being said, we finally come to negotiations back and forth and it basically was, put up as long as I was there when the work was physically being done that they would allow it, which basically leaves me on the hook personally. Right. Um, which I've got no problem with. Right. Um, yeah, you're doing good. But with, with all that being said, so now that we've finally gotten to the point that we're getting permission to be able to do this, you know, now I'm getting about time that I'm not really gonna be able to do much, so it's gonna be springtime by the mm -hmm. time we actually do it, but there's still a lot of cleanup in the front that we yep. need to do. Yep. I'd really like to take a lot of those trees down. I'd really like to take some maybe arborvitaes and clean up the front of that so it doesn't look like mm -hmm. a dump. Yep. Um, yep. You know, it, we can we can okay, go ahead nice. and, and do something else because we are going to be putting in that second gate. Mm -hmm. But once we put in that second gate, now we're going to have the ability to have a guard shack there like Greenfield and other places right. where you drive in and you say, you okay, well, what. you got the stuff in the back. That's where that goes. That's where that goes. That that's goes. And uh, you if, if you don't <laughs> want to pay me for this, this and that, yeah, there's the gate right there and you leave right now. Right. You know, instead of trying to catch somebody after they've already thrown something. And you're, right running and yelling at them and their windows are rolled up and they're driving down the road. Yeah. Um, so I think it's going to come to our advantage in the long run, but you know, a lot of these things just take time and they do, you know, and, and I'm, I'm just waiting for capital to go ahead and ask me, say, well, you didn't spend the money on this. And it's like, no, that's once fine. again, I, we I, understand I, I, I had to get the Kevin, permissions first. Yeah. I it makes sense. You. Yeah. Um, but to go ahead and kind of go back to the brush, uh, it may be a deal where if that's the case, then either, if if I if I have to shred, so what's either happening? either the so town what do you itself. Do with it now, because I notice I'll come in and it's all pushed back or it's scooped off and gone somewhere. So where does it, you take it? It goes out back. back. Yeah, okay. and then I've not been back there yet. Oh, you don't so. want to go back there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how many how many skeletons? Not are out there? You don't want to know. <laughs> um, no, but that that's where it is. And, and right now, because there used to be a big hole, the big hole's not there anymore. Okay. It's, it's pretty well leveled out. Yeah. Um, you know, there's probably a couple of places I might be able to. I might be able to go a little bit south. If I took down probably, I don't know, probably 35 trees roughly, because there's a small little gully area from where I am right now towards yeah. the um, capped landfill. Yeah. So I've got a little bit of room there that I still got a little bit of wiggle room, but not I don't have a lot of wiggle years room and left. Years worth. Okay. Um, and so it's either going to be either you charge for the brush to come in, yeah. you raise the rate for the bags. stickers right stickers in the yeah. bags or whatever yeah. however you want to go about that yeah or the town itself as a whole Pays. picks up for it but the problem is is you're not allowed to go in there recycling brush if you could have anything brush unless you've got a sticker what if you have a brush sticker would that work no sure 300 bucks a year <laughs> cheaper than i paid to get rid of my they see that tell you sold that. okay four <laughs> Um, um, but yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to just trying to let. Okay, you guys we'll bring it. I'm um, thinking. Give, give the, you know, give you give you something to think about. You yeah. know, and I know you got a ton already, but no, you know, <laughs> it, it's, it's. But do you have? Uh, what would be? I mean, are you thinking of buying a chipper and then? Having no, I'm. It's, no, no, you'd have no, a guy come in. And having somebody come it. in and with a tub grinder. Like when they had that big, it. they had that big, um, you know, snow snowtober. I know Long Meadow just piled mm -hmm. it all up, and they had a big tractor trailer truck that just munched it all. You know, they set it all in the yard and they just munched yep. it all up. And so what it does is it basically it, sh it shreds it. What it does, it doesn't really turn it down into a into a bark mulch or anything. It's more of a shredding. So, yeah. so what are we talking about for charges? Like if if you had this twice a year, this uh, basically from from the last price that I've got 
um, to, to deal with what we did have was $18,000, and that was two years ago. For one day? But for, for no, one, for it would take a while. To, for, for one, what, what was there was 18 yeah. grand. And so, and do you ask, uh, yeah, that's a lot of money. Yeah, right? that's a lot of money. But how many truckloads of stuff did you think that is from, I mean, just in general, do we have? Was that out back? They were looking out back and munching? Okay. Correct. Yeah, because it wouldn't be, because anything that's, that's there well, now one, one, is either over the embankment, and then once it goes over the embankment and gets crushed down, then the material goes over the top of it. So it's not a deal where you're just driving over brush, over brush, over right, brush. Right, right. You know, you bring down so much, and then you go ahead and you, and you basically put down a layer of dirt. Right. Um, and, and then continue from there. Settles in, yeah. I'm sorry? No, no, so I was just wondering, like, how many truckloads a day, you know, when the dump's open? So, I mean, it's I'm all trying day to long. envision People what yeah. you're it's, it's year It's year round. All day. You know, obviously, uh, you know, right after you get a windstorm, you know, it's huge. Or um, it's certainly spring and right. fall with so, all the cleaning. So exactly. would we be talking like a ten dollars a pickup or? I, I don't know to be honest with you. You know, and it, it would probably be behoove us to go ahead and get an idea. Yeah, see what of, of what we do doing. have for volume going in there, and then that way we can make it more can, can equitable for people. Sort, I was just going to say, can you s now just sort of? Get but it? there's a, there's a lot of towns that we are very we are one of the very few towns. Mm -hmm. That except brush. I have to say it's very oh, no, beneficial. I, know. It, I, I, I have to say I think it's a not unreasonable, but it's also because this is a user fee kind of thing. It's also not unreasonable okay. to say ten dollars for a pickup load, right? Or Fifteen bucks, or I mean, it would be interesting to see what our volume. Yeah, well, we, what could we have so for volume to make it mm -hmm. so that we could break even? Exactly, and that's pretty much what we tried to do with with the stickers and the bags. Yes, you I know, know, so that I we know. were not we there to make money. We're there to. To cover oh, no, costs. absolutely. Yep. I know. Um, you well, know, we're trying. And, and this well, right here, it's I, I can't absorb that at this point. Right. You yeah. know. Okay. Um, well, it's good to know. We'll so keep. We'll keep so on. So just keep an eye. Try to keep track so that we can kind of think of. But what but it for be. now, you're saying the brush dump is closed. No. It's, no. it's that, still open right now. We're still able to to bring some in for for a while. But this is something that we need to think about. Well, it's 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 basically it's going to boil down to. It's either going to boil down to um, my budget, right. where I'm going to be asking for another so much money, yeah. twenty thousand dollars just for the transfer station, yeah. which is going to bring me about a seventy-eight percent increase. Yeah. You know, which obviously is not going to work for level funding. Um, well, Kevin, I know, but so if you give us an idea of what um, it might cost, and we can generate some kind of fee schedule sure. that would offset that cost Correct. and then you can argue with the finance committee that you know this is a situation now it's changed i mean that's the kind of thing that we yeah because we're, we're like i said we, we we it's not like it's dire and like tomorrow right. but it's good you brought day. it up in the next yeah, but no. but this next is why we'll have to think within, about within within six months i'm out of room okay i'm out all right. Well, then it's the next budget within the next so, budget year. So right. yeah. Yeah. it's something Good that time we to have talk to. About. So this is you need you need to give us an estimate of what yep. um, no, it would be the expense, that. and that we could generate what kind of fees we could generate mm -hmm. with it, and um, to offset it, and then then the finance committee um, will be fine with it. No, There's no nothing problem. they can do about it. Cool. It's I, I would rather have the ability for people to use you know, our facility to get rid of their brush rather than just close it and that's it. Right. I mean, right? Don't you feel that way? Well, it's just selfishly, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know what I would do with my stuff. No, 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 but, but I mean, as someone that would use yes. it. Oh, of course. I would, if you'd had to pay for it, you got to pay for it one yeah. way or the other. I mean, I had to pay, like I filled, even just leaves and stuff would fill up right. over five years. You had to, I spent over a grand to get rid of this stuff. Yeah. I mean, so so the leaves and things like that, that is that is something that, that's manageable. That mulches down. You know, that stuff, mulches yeah. down. You know, and people go, oh, well, well, well the, the chips mulch down. Well, yeah, sure. 10 years from now. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's years. the amount of time. <laughs> yep. Um, okay. All right. So, so we'll so get just, on that. So just a few things to think about. This, and um, the last thing I'll probably leave with you is, is uh, again, when it comes to the budgeting season, um, because the state of Massachusetts has basically become an OSHA state and Department of Public Safety is going to be going around and doing a boatload of inspections, the whole mm -hmm. nine yards. There's a lot of things here in town that we are not compliant with. Well, let's and it's not a deal of get just, a list. 
It's not a deal of just trainings. It's going to be a deal of purchasing a lot of different things. Okay. And it's going to get expensive. I'm well, not going to throw a dollar amount a at look. you right now, but you know, just Kevin, can you just give us some examples of what we're what we're looking at? Well, he will. Yeah, right. No, no, a, no. Oh, but I, I don't now, mean dollar know. amounts. I mean, what do you as examples? Okay. Well, I mean, just right here in this room. Yeah. Okay, I, I can pick out probably twenty issues that you've got running right now. Yeah, maybe don't. Um, yeah, no, let's not. <laughs> maybe you know, don't. But we'll I, talk you, about You really that. don't want me to go down this road right now because if you do, then the building inspector will come down and close the door and <laughs> everybody will be sitting uh, outside yeah. in, in like their the cars. Like the cords and the... Yeah, yeah there's a don't, lot don't we need look. to work on. But <laughs> there, Okay, so we'll start stuff, looking at getting a list of things together exactly. that we there's can There's a address. lot of things, but like I said, I just want to prep, prep you up that okay. it's, it's up and coming stuff. And so, you know, again, I understand that, you know, we're trying to do the best we can with yeah, what but, we've got. Kevin, did you put any of this in the... Uh, well, most of them probably then are below capital improvement. Yes, most. I would think, yeah, correct. But, but that, but that, but then that means when I go ahead and, and instead of my budget going you know up two percent, no, I think because or, that's or to the be town, town office building goes up two percent. I think you need to make 10%. a list. I think you need to make a list of the OSHA right. things that are OSHA related, and then you put them into capital improvement, and we improve and we do that as a one-time up, upgrade cost because all of a sudden we have to well it's a living client. document you're never going to be done no i know you will never you be keep done adding to it right never. he's not in his head like there. <laughs> he's seen that yeah all right okay so that's all i got well do you do we is this this transfer station failure to comply notice is that new or is that just something that goes out every time or do you want, want to read that well, out loud i guess i just wanted to be clear on so we have annually we send out a notice that that it, um, basically articulates the rules of the transfer station and it says that in order to enter the, the facility you must have a sticker and when you get there you must use bags so we hand that out um, also, as a standalone policy on the website, we have a what's called a, a failure to comply Correct. Um, policy and reporting schedule. So if you go into the this transfer station, yes, and break those rules, um, then you can see that we, we do try to record that. And Good. after a, a period, you will be asked to not you know, return to the transfer station. Right, because we all pay our stickers. So, and yeah. we all yeah. I buy a sticker. We, I buy a sticker. So and everybody, I pay to put just, stuff in the bulky thing. Right. And, so we want to be clear Everyone that we have the fall. policy. It's it's a little tricky, you know, with enforcement <laughs> because you have you know the the land the landfill attendants and um, but yeah. we do have a, a method for we do try to record the um, you know the license plate and and then you know follow you know, it's up on interesting that. So talking to to different towns. You know, I've been in, in other towns where this is all board of health related. They oh, yeah, require the, the board of health, of health, of health to manage. Stations the place they don't yeah. have any transfer station people up there they don't have the police doesn't support them mm. yeah. it's up to the board of health only to implement all this and yep. well the board of health not fun thank you no thank you <laughs> i think we have a great system here yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, they pay but we will support you they and the police the, do well the board of health are paid uh no well in this um, case it, i'll um, fill you in later but um <laughs> okay yeah so, so, so with that basically so, right there that, yep. is, that that is a document that that if um, the attendants see something that their people are doing wrong, they go ahead and they're filling it out and they're handing it to me. Just they are notice. not there as enforcement. They are not right. there as a police officer. They are Correct. there to assist the people that are coming in and out. Mm -hmm. um, it is not their job to, to um, be yelled at. Right. Um, so the long and the short is, is, is that that's, they yell at me instead. Yep. This allows you to um, get so the So the long story short is, is those right there, they get generated. And they come to me, and then I go ahead and I look because the repeat I, offenders really, are not. I, I, I want to make sure because there's been a couple times where somebody said, "Oh, blah blah blah," and I went and I looked, and fortunately I looked up before we went ahead and sent the cops to the house mm -hmm. and said, "Ah, they got stickers." Yes. And it's it's I'm sorry that you know maybe they didn't put it exactly where we request them to put it, mm -hmm. but it's it was registered yeah, to that to vehicle, careful. their plate number, the whole nine yards. So. You know, so there's a little bit of investigative work that goes in behind it before we actually go ahead and say, you know what, you're banned from the transfer right. station for the next year. Thank you for your donation of $65 for your sticker. Um, you're not getting it back. Right. Have a nice day. Right. Okay. So. Sounds good. Um, so that's basically, and that's, and that's a document that, I'll be honest with you, I found when we were moving stuff from um, the old garage to the new garage. It was out in the back in one of the files. And then I think Diana was able to find it somewhere on the L drive. Great, great. So well, that's good. The other uh, list here is just um, do 
Do we set the rate for the bags again? I know I've done that in the past or a week or a week. No, you're good with that. that. I just We're I just gave you a copy okay, of what copy that's of what we put out at the beginning of the fiscal year. I just wanted to um, okay. my intention was to incorporate the non compliance policy, but if you read it, it really is already incorporated in there. So I think that what Kevin and I are left with is when we get to the point when we get three violations, you know, we we need to write take a letter or take, yeah. you know, take okay. the action, which, which we have been doing. But I just want to uh, reiterate for the public that okay. this exists. And we have a lot of new residents in town and yes. so that oh, they absolutely. understand the rules. Great and, thing. And, and, you know, so. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Very cool. Have a great night. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Um, let's see. We have a uh, request for appointments to several boards. We have a re uh, request for appointment to the Town Buildings Advisory Committee, and that would be Greg Franceschi. I make that motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then we have an appointment to the Energy Resource Committee, which is also Greg Franceschi. We can tell Greg moved back to town. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Greg, for all your I know. Uh, willingness to sit on these boards and, I make and that help. Motion. Yep. No second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We have a request for appointment to the Energy Resources Committee. Uh, Reed Predmore. I'll make a motion and thank Reed. He's already been doing um, research on the street lights. Great. So that's wonderful. Okay. Thank um, you, Reed. So we have a second. A second. Yep. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And then we have a request for appointment to the Historical Commission for uh, Jennifer Remillard. I'll make that motion and, and thank Jennifer. She's also the chair of the fundraising committee for the Oh, yes, year. I know who you mean. Yeah, yeah that's she's, wonderful. She's oh, wonderful. that's awesome. That's great. Thank you, Jennifer. Yep, I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Um, so the, let's see. We wanted to, um, so that was all new business. Uh, just floating back to old business, we have Office uh, manager building and land use hiring update, assistant town administrator hiring next steps, town administrator hiring next steps. So I, I somewhat just left those on just I know, in case just you as wanted a, to touch base. Well, I'm um, curious where we're at with the you, office manager. Yes, I yeah. want to give you an update on that. So we have hired a, a person. Oh, wonderful. Uh, Sue Brulat. Um, she is uh, going to be starting on December 9th. Um, so she is uh, coming to us from, from now. She's in medical process and billing, but she has experience working in town government. She's worked in the town of Greenfield. Great. Uh, in the planning department. And, um, well, that'll be great for Bob and, and everybody yeah. in town. So yeah. that'll be, that'll be yeah. awesome. She interviewed well. Oh, yeah, that's right. You were doing the interviews as well. And, uh, yeah. You know, Priscilla was uh, involved with the interview as well. Oh, good. And, you know, at, uh, Oh, that was good. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So when did, can she start? She, she starts December, December 9th. 9th. Yeah. December 9th. Yeah. Great. Okay. And the assistant town administrator, I know that's kind of hanging there yeah, as we we're just, looking for the town administrator, yeah. so we'll yeah. just wait on that. I know that's yeah. out the for town administrator. Yeah, yeah everything comes out. Apparently we have seven. Okay. We have seven yeah. applicants. Okay. According to John. All right. And we'll see how that goes. Mm -hmm. um, so last item would be the town administrator's report update November and you attached uh, you you've done a nice job of kind of updating yeah, some and stuff I think um, I just didn't know if there's any let me um, just hit that real quick because I know you gave me a list of um, uh, the only other thing I had was um, Diana I did get an email from Dick Evans that he had met after the meeting here okay um, and a bit, so he tweaked I guess the bylaws uh, submission a, a little bit more so um, he did send it to me. I just I have I haven't been home the last couple of days to forward it. But I when I go home I'll um, and do my email. I will forward you that. Um, he the only other question he had was was there any other did we as a board of health have any other questions or anything? I got to dig into that a little bit more. I thought he was moving to the. No, it's going to the planning board. It is going okay. To the he just wanted to make sure. Remember, there were some questions, and so they had sorted it out, and he wanted to make sure that the most updated version goes to the planning board, that they were working off that. So, would, Carolyn, you had sent um, a version that... And I'm not sure which... Okay. Uh, uh, that's so why so I want to make go sure. Yeah. Yeah. A fresh one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he, he, what, what happened is Monday, I mean, I've, I've been gone all week, so... Um, he had he left a message, and then I finally got back to him the, yesterday, and then so he sent me a new, the newest version, because he wanted to know if, if the planning board version was the newest version. I said, well, I have no idea. So, okay. 
Um, he sent me the newest version to, and I don't know why he just didn't send it to you, but I'm going to forward it to you. Okay. Only because he said it's the latest version okay. of all of, I guess because it was Tom Lesser or right. whoever the other lawyer was. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Plus had they had met with Dick and Bob. Correct. And so this is the latest version. So I'll make sure that goes to the planning board for December whenever their December meeting right the first first Monday. week yeah. yeah okay perfect but he but he did and he did ask if we had any further question on processing did we have any questions on I mean to uh, me, I'd like to you mean I don't know if you could send that along when you get it sure. and I'll just look yeah. at it again yeah I gotta spend some I mean, time it with was, it to me it was just pretty straightforward it's like you know the processing of lavender or, or any other mm -hmm. you know kind of mm -hmm. growth stuff, I mean, you know, plant growth, it's, you know, there wasn't really any, there was no chemicals or any, I mean, it has to be a clean sanitary place, that kind of stuff. So I wasn't going to, um, I mean, I didn't have any more questions. So okay. I'll just, I'll just relay to him. I'll CC him. That, that it's we, coming out and we're going to review. That, that I passed it on to Diana. So okay. She can pass it on to the planning board and that we had no further questions. So then. Um. Good. Well, don't tell him we had no further, because I want to just look at it real quick, but I don't think... Oh, I meant related to... Oh, okay. Just, just, I'll yeah, just, just say, say you passed it on, and then I'll, I'll review then, it, too. Then I brought it up, and yes, you, exactly. you and then I just you Just to it. make sure, I'll yeah. add if I have any, but... Yeah. Okay, good. And just so you know, we have... Um, as part of our discussion about assisting the planning board, um, we signed a contract with Chris Curtis for um, him to review the marijuana, the solar bylaw, and the green infrastructure continued and mm -hmm. the floodplain, st or okay. you know, he's working with the planning board Great. on those things. So um, the two of them were with MVP anyway, but the other two we added in um, just because they needed some, some professional planning assistance. Yep. So he's Great. agreed. So he's also um, looking at that um, marijuana draft as well that's okay. been provided. Okay, good. So. Um, yeah, I'm good. I've got all your stuff. I'm good for um, that. On the, um, Speaking of marijuana, yeah. are we part of the, been named in the lawsuit by the yes. federal? Yes. So we had a um, public records request from the district, the mm. U.S. Department of Justice, um, mm -hmm. as many communities did. So um, basically I put together, uh, we did an electronic review of everything then in our shared drive, our, and we mm -hmm. put together all of the um, HCAs, every version of HCA that you did, all yep. the emails that we had, I sent um, some stuff yeah, that, that we I pulled had. together, um, and at all the, I only had emails from Trevor and mm -hmm. between Trevor and Wendy mostly. Um, if I had anything, I would have told you, but I did let yeah. Trevor know, and I sent everything to council. Everything went through to do council. Too much by email. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, I yeah, had this is a I had discussions on that, so I just yeah, ordered everything. Yeah, it was just a few things, right? There wasn't many, I don't think many we're in things. Any and, issue? They no. just want to evaluate. I think there are some towns that went over and aboard, over and above what they needed to do, possibly across the state, and so that's what they're looking at. I think us, Waitley got one too. I mean, we've all done From my even less than is, what we could I, have. I was, so I was just going to say, my understanding is we're at we're the middle, in the middle bottom. Yeah, yeah exactly. Of, of we did not extort anybody. No. No, ours and is pretty and certainly we don't have any licenses. That. But how many this money is, coming in? So. I mean, this is what's <laughs> We're just ridiculous. horrible at extorting people, apparently. I know. <laughs> and it's like, all right, well, let's get some cash in that we can at least support our town. I know. Right. No. Yeah. So, I, have we it heard is. any more about the licensing situation? I haven't heard anything, I haven't no. Heard I know. Um, I mean, they are still working on, we, they just redid the 198 Mill Village Road site plan. Yeah. You know, so I know yep. they're, so they're moving forward on that. To get all that stuff the, back into. Um, yeah. But I know, haven't heard anything on Deerfield it. Road at all, or what, Greenfield Road, or whatever it's called. No, yeah. Sugarloaf Shops. No. Or, nothing. No, nobody's, I haven't nobody heard out any. here has been getting licenses. I haven't heard no. anything from CCC. And I get an update from CCC. I mean, I look at who they're granting. I haven't seen really anything. Nothing in West Mass, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Greenfield's had a few, but. So. Okay. Um, so, so I think, you know, we're doing, I sent the list, I don't have it in front of me, but we have um, the big things, you know, we're, we have, we're in negotiations for the, the town buildings um, uh, advisory committee had met and reviewed the proposal we've got. Mm -hmm. So we had, I'd sent that back and we'd asked for that to be re, um, resubmitted to us. So I'm expecting that any, any time. Um, 
We have the uh, solar negotiation. Beth Greenblatt and I and NexAMP have been on the phone a couple times and we've negotiated that agreement that you would be reviewing the next agreement and it's with town council right now. So yep. um, town council has been extremely busy this time of year. We've been know, inundating yeah. them with contracts. Yeah. <laughs> so um, there's a few things I've had to, I've been yeah. nudging, but it's just, you know, they, they've been in, inundating yeah. for, mm -hmm. with I know us they, for contracts. They got this one done um, for so I think those are kind of the big, and then the energy committee met last night. And so when I was saying about, um, they, we have many projects. So we have, um, we have gotten confirmation from Eversource that they have given the go ahead to DCR to work on the Sugarloaf parking Park lot. lot, to pave the yes. Sugarloaf parking lot below, um, you know, where the rec area is. So I don't think that, obviously that won't be done this year, no. it'll be next yeah, year. Be next year. Um, yep. But part of that um, discussion we were having was to also put an electric car charger there. Right. And there's a lot of enthusiasm from the Energy Committee and Eversource and sort of everybody about that yep. idea. So while we are uh, moving ahead with the Leary Law application, the intake application for that, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what Kevin's referring to as well with getting that Leary Law um, information more identified, um, we are also potentially looking at doing one at the at the Sugarloaf parking lot, um, but that's complicated because there's several owners, you know, there's a couple ownership issues with DCR. And so. Um, but that's moving ahead. And then the other energy efficiency, the green communities, the, um, our annual report is due. So David and Alyssa um, from the COG met this week and worked on that and, and um, we'll be Do getting we, that submitted by December 5th. Does that allow us any ability to apply for a grant? Yes, that, okay, once good. we get that and done, then, then we can apply for the grant, the next round of uh, yes. green communities. That's coming out and, this spring. And then do we have projects kind of earmarked for that yet or are they looking at some I stuff? think they well, are looking really at the street, some projects. So then the subsidies for So then they are so I know um so so Reed is working on that and he's so we have the proposal from Paul and we yes. are evaluating that. Good. Um but Reed also had done is doing some yeah, research he's been and good. we're doing a lot of work. Oh, right. Great. And That's so we're great. putting together he's some some pricing and then I think David and I just want to make sure that we don't miss the boat on the capital again. Like right. if there's any issues for capital that exactly. have to do with any of these things that right. we have, you know, we have that we're there with that, whether yeah. it's doing a green communities well, project I, or I think we should put we in any matching. I, I think money. we should put something in just as a placeholder, so that there's nobody that gets upset. Yes. And we put it in for the lights. I know Reed had worked on this before, did some preliminary research a couple a year or two ago. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, I mean, he's been doing this Great. right along. Yeah. It's been wonderful. That's good. So I, I know somewhere and he has access to vaguely, all the stuff I remember we've done. something okay, like twenty thousand dollars or something. Yeah. If we could put in something for the capital mm -hmm. yeah. for the light, the LED purchases, or you know, the lamp. Light post, yeah, the uh, buyback, street, street yeah. light buyback or whatever, and then LED light bulbs, you know, mm -hmm. it might be covered by a grant, but might not. But I just remember twenty thousand somewhere yeah. is is a preliminary. So yeah, the hopefully, total is a hundred and something. Yeah. Right, but but, but the match, initial uh, uh, yeah, yeah, our match might be like twenty. Mm -hmm. But if we put in as, at least twenty mm -hmm. or twenty five. Um, as as the initial, at least get it on the five-year plan. Then, I agree. And then we can advise it, revise it as we get more information. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. And so and then so that so the street lights and then the other pieces the with the EV charger if there is a cost to the community we're trying to there's a small cost so we're trying to figure out. Um, at the uh, outset, the installation, but also the ongoing maintenance and operation can, piece can't is the we last do that piece. As part of our um, MVP complete streets kind of thing. We might be able to because it's only if the, uh, you know that just small amount. We might be able to come up with something, but that's what yeah. that's sort of that last yeah. piece. That there's a make ready application that we are working on with EverSource, and we're really close. But there's just a couple more pieces for the yep. EV charger. So okay. I think I think we need to we should be up. Um, I mean, I hope to apply for, you know, another MVP round in January, but, I mean, we're going to meet next next week, or no, two weeks, two weeks. Yeah. to figure out what possibly we would want in that round, but I feel like we have to, every round, we have to put something in because, you know, right now there's 176 towns, and... <laughs> Potentially, I mean, the governor is putting so much more money to this and so many more rounds that it's going to be more and more competitive. So we mm -hmm. some, somehow 
we're, we're not, at some point, we're not going to be able to get any more money. Right. It's going to be harder. Much harder, point, yeah. Much harder to get the points. So mm -hmm. we, um, I mean, the meeting today was, they're talking about adding in this whole other component. So I could see us, you know, us being eligible for this healthy soils component, mm -hmm. which means that we could do redo all our athletic fields and, and any other town Mm -hmm. property and maybe even get a you know a forestry management plan out of it and I mean there's so much potential on this stuff Great. so um, we really got to pay attention and you know keep strategizing mm -hmm. but Chris is really good I mean Chris is great to work with so um, I think we, we we just have to have a long-term plan did we want to talk about this at all or just this um, is just for review right now do this we? The, we, um, we got this stuff from. Oh, for the. Uh, oh, I, yeah. Beating. I wanted. I asked Pat just to give you a, a sort of a preview of what a we list expect of who's for the. Doing this yeah. has to do be by next month. Right? right. We will put the one. We need to put that on next month's agendas. This is alcohol. Yeah. Probably both of them. Yeah. This is all. We have to do There's all. There's also the, a. Um, did you see? Oh, this wasn't Phoebe's thing. Did you see the? Uh, there was some. Some information from Phoebe today. Did I forward to you? I didn't. No. See maybe that. I forwarded it to Dick. I think. Did you get a copy of it? Who's to well, me? I have, I've oh, even checked your email. Yeah. So there was stuff on the. Um, it was on the short-term rental stuff. Okay. So there's discussions going on at, in, at Franklin's, you know, the health cooperative about short-term rentals and stuff. So you'll um, see the email. Figured, we can have challenge. they figured out a way to charge room tax? Because we're supposed to be able to charge room tax. I think. That. I think uh, there's a yes. The, it, well, they're cross-referencing that list with the, you know. Airbnb list and making sure that things are accurate. So, because we're supposed to be collecting those room taxes, mm -hmm. and, and you know that's. I think there's a there's an interesting list that came out, so we should just you, you'll see it in your email from Phoebe. Okay. So just review that. Right. We can get it on right. the next agenda. Um, do, are we going to enter the um, executive session to discuss? Um, I don't. Or do I we need to have, today or not? I don't, don't have, have much to. I don't really have any. Do you want to do it next next do, week? It's up to you. When are we meeting again? You've given us some. Oh, did we, I mean, um, did we get any feedback from John on the no. contract? No. I don't think so. I haven't really had a chance to meet with him at all. So. Okay. Well, can, when can are we, we meeting just, again? I have uh, your next December meeting. 4th? Your next regular meeting is December 4th. Okay. Um, so let's put it on December 4th. Can you just okay. touch base with him? Yes, I will. I will. Okay. I'll stop in there. Yeah. Um, is that everything? Any public comment? We hate to leave it to the end, but geez, you're always welcome to speak up. How are you? Good, good, good to see you. Um, so I just um, so for next meeting, I just want to do kind of a quick update because we talked about a lot. So for next meeting, um, I want to or before that, I will send you a draft of um, the uh, capital improvement requests. Yes. Because I do have. We didn't really get into some you know deep dives tonight but right, I want um, to, though. the seniors you know I'd like to I yes. don't you know we just need to think about the senior and center how long and will it capacity. take for them to assess that building do you know is there a date when that's going to be done well the thing that I think is notable about that is that in 2014 you had an assessment on right. that building some of the price estimates don't seem accurate maybe right. because they didn't include prevailing wage that's yep. what Bruce Hunter had mentioned okay um, but you do have a, a fairly substantial list of the items that are deficient. When we went to go out to do the RFQ for this process or RFP for the yep. town buildings assessment, the same company that put together that proposal or put together that yeah. review in 2014 bid on that process. Right. We didn't award them because they didn't, um, they, you know, they didn't come in as highly advantageous. But but what they planned to give you as a rapport was basically the same rapport right. that they had given you in 2014. That's what they used so as really the example decide, of what they were going to give you. Yep. So I guess my point is I'm not sure, and I've been really trying to, you know, I'm being optimistic, but I'm not sure how much more information you're going to get well, I think about the grammar school that you I don't would, already know through this building assessment process. We're going to get... Um, 
the idea of this assessment is you're also going to get a cap, a, you know, along a capital plan. Mm -hmm. You just have a report basically that comes out of it that will have a, a capital plan and a robust maintenance plan, and will tell you all the deficiencies of the building for its current use. Well, that's um, really but you what do I, you do have that. I do. You know, I do have some of that. And so, really, what we really right. need to come to terms with is a group of people to get together and decide. Are we going to keep that building? Are we going to take it down? What are we going to do with the church? Are we going to take it down? Are we going to build a new town hall? What right. are we going to do? We got to so, get a plan going forward right. on this. Which is so big I expenses. think the whole point was to get someone to help us, give us this so, guidance. So I think so. I think the reason so so to for the assessment, I think the idea of the committee um, is that what they're going to be able to give you um, after the assessment is is for this building, the, the grammar school and the, um, the church, you know, what, what the current limitations are for the current uses, not so mm -hmm. much the church, but basically what that is, if you wanted to, you know, use that, what you would have to bring up to code, um, so that you have enough information to know what, you know, how, what the reach is, like how much, if you want, how much money you want to put into the building, it's just going to give you more information to make the decision. Okay, that's what I need. I just need to know, like, which is way it to two go. million to fix it up or to just. But I think that there, you're also at a point where you know you have the senior working group together, and they're mm -hmm. trying to assess. They have you have three towns. Yes. You're trying to assess. Um, so the current the current facility, we know that there's shortcomings in the current Major. facility just to have our current services. Right. But there's also a sense of that there needs to be expanded services yes. delivered. And what kind of senior center would that look and like? And neither of those buildings support that right now. So, I the, can tell you so that. the three town group has come together to look at all of those things. And I think that is, it is, it is a, um, a challenge to figure out how to move forward with the buildings. I do think that in your capital improvement request, you should consider some feasibility money for mm -hmm. next year. Feasibility is different than just assessing. Assessing well, tells you what the current what conditions we, we are. Put, feasibility tells mm -hmm. you what the potential. We put a chunk of money aside, and then part of that's being used for this assessment. Right. So we had that money right. set aside to do a feasibility and study. And I, I you know, I, I don't want to, I want to be positive about it, but I am concerned that the part that is dealing with the grammar school is going to be redundant in this assessment, that you might not get a lot of new information than you got from 2014, unless the conditions have deteriorated. Okay, well, we'll see. I mean, they're doing great they work. Could have. That, that oh, yeah, no, no, the report's going to be, the reports yep. are going to be amazing. I'm just saying, when you, we still have to no decide one's gonna tell the next us. steps. I know. Right. No one's going to tell us the easy answer. It's yes. going to be a hard one, and it's going to be tough for everybody. But it, right. as long as we have some sound data to work from, we can we can make that decision yeah. and move I, forward. I think what would be really helpful, Trevor, is for when you go, you know, as you continue on with the boo and then coming back to the board, is for for you to help guide the senior groups, the working group, in figuring out how to uh, to say, you know, what the needs, you know, basically have these two processes come together at some right. point. Like the, the seniors are, uh, you know, also need some support from the boo, yep. um, you know, kind of coming you okay. know, from both directions. So we'll do that. I don't know if I'm being sure. clear, the problem is you can't focus if you don't really have, I mean, if you don't have a vision and the vision is I mean, I don't know I'm what kind of opaque on it a little bit. Yeah. I need a little bit of help there, but I, I, I think an architect. The right. one that did that presentation right. with the I buildings so committee energized. was really nice, and I think. Yeah, right. I felt so energized. I feel like it's worth. Of course, if you have if, 20 million bucks sitting around, you can yeah. build anything you yeah. want. But so, so the group is considering doing a, a survey. You know, like not yep. not, I know. not like the town and assessment. I'm curious when, when that survey is done. Too, yes, they, what, we what are looking at um, a cop. You know, we are actively working on that, so that's exciting. Great. It and is. then they are looking at, um, you know, going out and looking at other senior centers. And yep. So, there is, you know, the group is also um, visioning, you know, their, What they're looking for. Right. Yeah, good. Yeah. So. so motion to adjourn. Thanks. Thank you. Motion. All those Second. in favor? Aye. Aye.